I've got it. Cool. I'm looking at you right here, right now, which is all good and fun. So you're like a Kajix one trick, huh? Yeah. Uh, I used to be pretty good all around. I mean, Kajix was my best. I used to be good all around. Uh, Evelyn, I was also just as good at. She Solid. Strong. Um, I used to be like pretty average. Like Kazix was the one I could carry people with. And then, like, if I was bored and wanted to play other champs, I'd be like, "Hey, I feel like playing someone. I'm not gonna suck, but I'm not gonna win it for the team." So. Got it. I was good, but not carry good, except for around a couple, two, three, four champs. Um, took the season off. Now I'm Kazix, the one I've been relearning, and now I've got him in and out again, so I can carry him confident, carry with him confidently. But you know, nice. I'm playing one guy. Well, one thing that, that I have learned playing this game is even if you think you're good, you can always be better. And that exactly. there are always people like finding new things, like like input buffering. That's a thing that's a big hot topic this year. But, you know, a year ago, nobody, not even the pros, like really knew what it was consistently. Yeah. You know, but now like every silver player knows what input buffering is. So that's just goofy. So there's always like a, a way to push the envelope because people are discovering new things, finding new things and stuff like that. So so let me bring it back to you then. I, I got the gist of you. It seems like you're, you generally know your stuff. You were talking about, oh, I, I took a year off of League because I was going hardcore in another game. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming you, you will know your stuff. But what would you like me to help you learn, help get better at? And just so um, we can get it all out there because we only have an hour or two. Yeah, um, I guess a couple things. Uh, just... Being in the right place at the right time, you know, like I said, like luck plays a little factor in it, but obviously people that no are... No luck. Right it's a strategy a game. A lot. Yeah, exactly. People that are in the right place in the right time all the time are, are doing it because they know what they're doing, and it's not just happening across it. So. it it's more like, like, are, are you a math guy by any chance? Uh, no, I got a D in pre-calc, and that was seven years ago. It was the last math class I took. Do you play poker? Uh, very poorly. <laughs> Do you understand poker? I uh, moderately... <laughs> All right, well, here, let, Texas Hold'em, right? Let's say you have pocket aces, yeah, uh, and you're playing against one other guy at the table. You don't know what they have. Uh, before any any betting, anything at all, how often do you win the hand? Uh, I have no idea. It, it's, like, it's like 80% of the time, yeah, let's say. Yeah, and then you can tie. Yes, yeah, so like four out of five times you win, 20% of the time you like lose or tie, right? Yeah. But then as more cards come out, you know, you get more information, they're betting differently, you know, that those probabilities change. But 80% of the time, it's the right call to like go all in right there because four out of five times you win. Yeah. So think about being in the right place in the right time, like doing those things that like 80% of the time, 55% of the time, 60% of the time will make you money, will, will make you closer to winning the game. So it's not necessarily that they're in the right place at the right time. It's just they're generally making a decision that helps them more than hurts them. Okay. And, and there's the inverse of that, too, because you could be doing things that are like 40% win rates, and you just don't know that. And so it, it's not going to hurt you every time, but 40% of the time, you're just going to – like 40% of the time, it'll be fine, but 60% of the time, it won't be. So there's stuff like that. That you want to look at so just kind of explaining that right place at the right time how do i do that but also not being wrong place wrong time is just as important because if you if you stop doing that then suddenly you find yourself in the right place more often okay so two different ways to attack the same thing it, as weird as that sounds let me know if that made zero sense and i'll try throwing other metaphors at you oh yeah that made sense i mean if you're in if you're in the wrong place then yeah, you're, it's uh, not the right, in the right place. place. Then you're not in the wrong place. So that's kind of like a, a negative one, zero, one. Right? Exactly, one, exactly. One, okay. So it's neutral and one is you're in the right place. So it's it's like a two benefit compared to a negative one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. What else? What else? Because we can do that, sure. There's a lot. we I could talk about that for days. So <laughs> uh, That's one of the big things. Um, trying to fucking figure out, you know, obviously it's, it's pretty intuitive to most people, but for some reason I can't figure out who's got similar play styles to, to what I like. Um, you know, champ wise, I, yeah, champion wise, you know, okay. Because I, I like, I don't like Rengar. Uh, I know Rengar is similar to Kazakh, so he's someone I want to learn, but I am fucking dog shit. So I got to put way more practice into him mechanically before I even worry about making sure I'm making the right decisions. On yeah, him. and if you haven't played the game in a while, there are a whole bunch of items that are really good on champions like Kazakh. Like, uh, like, have you tried out Death's Dance at all? Oh, Death's Dance is one of my favorites, but it, it works on Kazakh because how many of his abilities do you physical damage? All of them. All of them. And so all of those heal and all, they give you CDR, they get, oh, they let you survive when you jump. It, you know, so there's a bunch of stuff like that that maybe we can point out and then be like, okay, who else uses similar things? So you can get to cookie cutter builds and cookie cutter play styles. But yeah, we can go through that. Okay. 
Uh, uh, and similar play styles to just Kajiks, or, or like, I guess similar play styles to what is my question. Well, primarily Kajiks. That's where I'm going to start. Cool. You know, you got to expand your pool little by little. I can't just say, hey, these guys are all similar, and then just start playing. Just say, hey, oh, I have a champion pool of seven. So little yeah. by little, you know, I used to play, I, I you know, support in tanky junglers like Zach. Um, and then, like, I main support. I played with some diamond teams as a support, even though I was never diamond. Okay. But, um, so, you know, just kind of like, hey, the meta shifted. Kha'Zix sucks. Tanks in. Tank jungles in, you know, instead of tank top lane, tank jungles now. So, well, identifying... Uh, another thing I want you to realize, like, just because, like, the player base says that the meta has shifted and that, that certain champion sucks, it doesn't mean they're right. Yeah. Because, like, 90% plus of the player base has no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah, it is also true. So sometimes you got to ignore the noise, because Kajix has been strong for a while, and there are items that let him withstand the tanks. You know, like Sterix Gage, that was super strong, and all the junglers in Korea, regardless of what jungler it was, was just buying that item. And then Riot nerfed it, not because it was being played in North America, where we are, or Europe, or anywhere else, but because the Koreans who actually do the math and ignore all the idiots on the internet had found a whole bunch of stuff that made champions like Kajik strong because, you know, you can survive that round of CC from the tanks, delete the enemy DPS, and then, you know, what are they going to do? But so there's stuff like that that, like, just, just ignore that meta talk for the time being. Yeah. Okay. Because you're down in what, like, gold three right now? Yeah, gold three. P people have no idea what the hell they're talking about meta-wise. When you get up to, like, diamond three, diamond two, that's when that stuff starts getting important because everyone's on the same page. In gold yeah. three, you could have anything on your team. Yeah. So so ignore that for now. When, when you climb a lot, and you will, um, th that's when those little nitty-gritty things start being important. But for now, just, like, Kajix is a fantastic champion for just climbing through gold, climbing through platinum, because people make so many positioning mistakes. Yeah. Like, he literally has a mechanic that when you position bad, he does extra damage. So, I mean, a lot of extra damage. He, he's perfect. <laughs> Plus, okay. they just changed the Hydra back, so you can do the old Night Blue build. You don't have to, though. There are so many other items that make you strong, because you can yeah. use the the Juggernaut items. You can use the upgraded AD carry items. You have so many tools. So it's yeah, it's probably a really fun time. He, he power spikes several times. Most champions have one or two, or like, boom, boom, you know, completed jungle item strong. He's got jungle item, death dance, you know, and then several evol evolutions so he's yeah and, and you have options too like you don't have to evolve them the same way like maybe everyone on your team is like way better than you randomly N never happens to me but maybe you're luckier than i am <laughs> maybe you max w and you evolve that just to keep the enemy team off of your carries i don't know yeah or maybe they're bad and then you evolve q first and e so you get resets and I, I don't know, you, but you have options, is what I'm saying. So Kyle's yeah, a great exactly. champ. Yeah. I love By the that. way, I talk too much because I get excited about this. So just cut me off. I won't be offended. Tell me to shut up if you have something to say. Because this is about you, not about me. Yeah, I got some. You know, I'm getting some input, so I'm happy. Okay, cool. What else? What else? So far, we have how do you be at the right place at the right time? Uh, similar play styles to Kajix. What champs to pick up? What else? Um, identifying power spikes, I guess, is a problem I have. Uh, okay. I know that a lot goes with repetition and just figuring it out, but, you know, there's, there's, you know, I've, I have identified, example for Kha'Zix, the main guy I know, I've identified a lot of his power spikes, but not so much, hey, I don't know when this champion I'm going against in the jungle power spikes, or, or who power spikes. Ah, uh, you know, so, so not necessarily power, power spikes, spikes, but when can I 1v1, when can I 2v2, when can I do X, is that what you're getting at? Um... Kind of. I mean, that was that was more of a specific example. It's kind of like you know, a lot of times where where I'm ahead or something, and I'm like, hey, I'm really strong right now, and then I make a a move, thinking, hey, I can get away with it, and then I, you know, a I didn't pay attention. Corky got oh, Corky has triforce. So like boom, I, I I did something, and I I didn't identify that, you know, I did I did the same thing five minutes ago, but now I can't do that because of the power spike of this champion. So got I'm it. Identifying power spikes. And then that that will help me avoid dumb deaths and stuff like that. Okay, cool. No, no, we can do that. Also, um, I we were talking over Skype earlier, just the, for the one person watching the stream, and he he's gonna do a a replay file for me too. It's just right now it was like an hour before, and I told him to upload it to YouTube, and that's kind of a dick move to try to do it right now. But if if you get a game where you know maybe this happened, it's a lot easier to be like, oh. Well, Captain Hindsight 2020, you know, you missed this, obviously, and then we can go through and talk about similar things. Like, that'll be a lot easier to pull out than just talking about it. 
So if you get like a few videos, maybe like one or two games, we can just like watch them at double speed, find interesting things, replay it a whole bunch, and look at stuff like that. Okay. But for now, maybe we'll just go through some verbal things. So maybe that's in like another session. But I can yeah. help generally. It's just a lot easier of specific situations. Yeah, exactly. All right, what else? Um, decision making, uh, macro, micro. I don't know. I mean, okay. What, where, where? I mean, again, that kind of goes with uh, right place, right time. But just a lot of times, specifically or particularly after you know the, the outer towers are gone. And ah. it's easy to defend for that. I'm like, well, okay, I, I solo dragon. I can kill him in five seconds with Unkazix. I've got all the the blue and reds are off the map. None of the lanes are pushing in our favor. The enemy team is all up, and they're defending really well. How do I... What's the next objective when I can't see the next objective? And, and being patient enough. Obviously, the inner turrets take a lot longer than the outer turrets, so... Yeah, 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 for I'm sure. I'm going, okay... This is in five minutes where we need to be, and, and trying to figure out what objectives to take because I, I typically, you know, like I said, after the first towers are gone, it's a lot harder for me when it's not so obvious. Like, hey, three dead, and they have 40 seconds, go get there. When it's not so obvious, what, what objective am I trying to take? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, quick question. Can you turn your mic up anymore? Otherwise, I'm going to turn my mic down a little on the stream just because the person watching is like, I can hear you fine, Gunday, but this guy, I want to hear all the important stuff he's saying, and they just can't for whatever reason. I can give it a shot. Give me a sec. Yeah. Also, this will help because if, if he can't hear you, you won't be able to hear you on the video. So when, if you're re-watching this for notes, then it'll just be dumb because you won't be able to hear it. <laughs> it be a very one-sided conversation. Uh, manage auto, that's an auto. This is another reason I'm typing all this out, because this is a common problem. And if you can't turn it up, what we can always do is I can just turn me down, and then everyone else can crank the volume up. Okay, how's this? Ah, oh, that's better for me. Alright, I boosted it up 10 decibels, and I don't want to go too far over that to... Yeah, I think I can hear myself the echoing in the, the background. Do you have headphones? I do, actually. It's a very dirt cheap headset. Let me turn it down just a little bit for you. Okay, cool. And if anything, I goes too far. Oh, I guess there's only two levels. <laughs> so ten. Uh, oh, no I can, worries. I can just talk louder as well. I mumble a lot, so this will help me talk to girls a little easier. If it's a headset, like move the mic closer to your mouth too. That's like an easy one. I think you did that earlier. Yeah, it's like touching my mouth. Perfect. <laughs> like actually, you're a lot louder and clearer to me, so I think that could be better. I, I'm also going to turn myself down a little, so maybe the guy watching can just turn up the stream a little. All right, and let me know if I'm too quiet. No, nah, you're fine. All right, nice. Okay, so let's keep going. So, I, I, I mean, the decision making thing—that's actually how I usually start with. Did you want to just run with these and and go? And if we have to do another session, that's fine. If you hate me, want to find another coach, that's fine too. <laughs> yeah, we'll run with those. That's in, you know, there's a lot that we can talk about on all of those subjects. So we'll start oh. with there. If we somehow speed through it and, I, and we have time I can try and add some other stuff there's definitely stuff I, other stuff I need to know but those are the main big points okay for the time being uh, okay so <laughs> correct answers there are two correct answers yes uh, pressing objectives nope no 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 like like very simple how do you win the game and, and you might have said it too killing the Nexus or making them surrender exactly that's it okay all right so now making them surrender, like Kajix is very good at that, right? Because you can you can just demoralize an enemy team. But for for the sake of this, uh, let's focus on the first one, killing the Nexus. So so how do you do that? Yep, yep, yep. Don't don't worry about that. I'm just saying I have oh, okay. no idea what, what kind of player you are. So gotcha. so these questions are gonna feel like they're dumb, but it's to help me figure out where you're missing things. Yeah, no problem. So how do you win the game? There are there are two correct answers. There are two correct answers. Yes. Uh, pressing objectives. Nope. No, no, no. Like, like very simple. How do you win the game? And, and you might have said it, too. Killing the Nexus or making them surrender? Exactly. That's it. Oh, okay. All right. So, now making them surrender, like, Kajix is very good at that, right? Because <laughs> you, can, you can just demoralize an enemy team. But for, for the sake of this, uh, let's focus on the first one, killing the Nexus. So, so how do you do that? Uh, you have to kill the two towers in front of the Nexus, yep. at least one inhibitor yep. in one lane, and then the three towers in front of that lane. Yep. Or one one inhibitor or all three? Yep. 
Just one. Okay, cool. Is necessary. So, so how do you do that? How do you kill all the towers? Uh, you shove your minion waves typically to tank it for you, and then uh, with the you, you just attack it basically. Okay. Well, what if there's like an enemy team trying to stop you? What do you do? You try to pick them off or force them back to their base so that they cannot defend it. Okay. How do they? How do you do that? Um, and again, by, stupid questions, but just yeah, breaking yeah. down all the things. Yeah. Uh, by taking advantage of their mispositions or just out fighting them. Okay, cool. I mean, that's pretty much it. You, you have passed my first test. About eighty <laughs> percent of the people I coach don't get that right. <laughs> so, so you got that. Okay, so yeah, we can yeah. focus on nittier, grittier, grittier stuff, and I don't have to explain that towers are better than kills. Now, for yeah. the, the make them surrender part, like you can actually focus on kills and demoralize them and spamming bad manners and, you know, recalling next to them with one HP just to really piss them off. And, and that's a play style that some people really enjoy. And we can talk about that too. But just because your end goal is to climb, right? Yes. Okay, because some people want to learn, like, every champion, get all the nitty-gritty details. Other people just want to get, like, Challenger as best as they can. And I don't yeah. know if I can help you get that, but I can help you get the yeah, diamond, exactly. no problem. That's, that's the hope. Okay, cool. So this goes back to decision-making. Every single decision that you are making should be, how can I kill the Nexus? Or how can I do the things leading up to killing the Nexus? So a lot of the decisions are, hey, maybe I start doing this dragon to get the enemy team out from turtling under their tower so that they can misposition within the fog of war or on one of my wards and I can jump in and execute a carry and get a reset and then suddenly there's no enemy team and I can take a tower. You know, so a lot of the decisions are about forcing that chain of events that will lead to getting the nexus. And that seems kind of counterintuitive, but most of the player base doesn't understand that. So I, I have this handy thing called Rift Kit. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but uh, this is essentially just a map of Summoner's Rift. I can move around little things like M is the mid laner, uh, J is the jungle, stuff like that, right? So if you're screen sharing, you should be able to see this. Is that showing up okay? That is showing up A-OK. -okay. So instead of just being like, well, here are different decisions you can make, let, let's think of very specific situations. Like if you want, we can go through and you can tell me like, hey, Here's my team comp, here's theirs team comp, here we are, what should I do? Like maybe you have a specific game you were thinking of. And we can like go through and be like, all right, what should I have done here? Well, and let's see if I got anything in recent memory. I don't know why. I, you know, I just got Microsoft Word. Let me open that up too. But yeah, while, while you're thinking about that, I'm going to get another notepad so I can write stuff down. My computer is being weird. Windows 10 is weird with screen share, apparently. <laughs> Fun. I'm still on a pirated Windows 7. <laughs> Fantastic. You might want to keep that for a while. Yeah, I... I'm, uh, I've heard very many annoyances with Windows 10. But here, for example, let's do team comps. Like, what's yours, what's theirs, just for example? Like, like sure. are you playing Kha'Zix this game? Yeah, I'll be Kha'Zix. Okay. As long as I am. By the way, how do you how do you say it? Because I've heard like like I'm a big Last Shadow fan. He calls it Kha'Zix. I say Kha'Zix. Is that the correct way to say it, or? I'm about ninety five percent positive. <laughs> I'm. He, he, like that streamer I, I mentioned also thinks like Fizz is a girl, so like he may just be trolling. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Last Shadow, the former Gravity coach, right? Yep. Yeah, that guy. I've I've heard. Many things of him. Yeah, uh, the worst part I hate is my friend says, uh, just, you know, not related to the lesson, but my friend says Jin Zhao <laughs> and Jin. But he shortens them both to Jin. So when you're going, God damn it. Jin, so you have no idea who he's talking about. I'm talking about. I don't know if I can go in and fight them or if I have to run. <laughs> so he goes, oh, Jin killed me. But which, which one? <laughs> and this is why I ask. Okay, so I'll call him Kazix for you, but, but I've been calling him Kajix for years now, and that's probably pissing off my stream to no end. <laughs> okay, uh, so, uh, if, if so you want to call him, it's fine. Who are the teams? What are we doing? I'll just throw this off to the side so we have them. All right, we've got, uh, let's go with a Maokai top lane on my team. Okay. That'll be my buddy who I usually play with. Good, strong champion right now. God, how, how do you spell Maokai? That looks right. We've got, I'm trying to throw 
trying to find here. Let me let me find a further back game that I lost. Cool, cool. Yeah, that'll actually be good. Those are the games you want, by the way. The, the really close ones that you lost, and you're like, what the hell happened? Yeah. So if you can get a replay of that, maybe next time we do one of these, just we'll pull that up and play through it, go through the interesting parts, figure out things that happened, laugh at everybody's mechanics. Oh, yeah, exactly. The other, be good times. Not the other big problem. I say big problem. The other, as if I... It, it's the singular. Uh, but a lot of problems, not problems, but I have where... You know, it's like, oh, I lost, I lost this game, and it's like I could go and review it, but it's like a lot of it up, it up, hey, I was fucking eight one, and then I wanted to have yep. one and stick around, and then they caught their own. A lot of cases of, well, I didn't. It's not that I made the wrong decisions. I just wanted to have fun, and that bit me in the ass. Which sometimes is the wrong decision. <laughs> but yes, it, it, it is in that scenario, but in the scenario of climbing, in the scenario of playing a game, I wanted to have fun. But yeah, I, games I, are supposed to be I, fun. I, I biffed it. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, well, well, in that situation, you know why you lost, so it would be pointless to look at it. Yeah, you know, exactly. Don't do We're that again. I, I just, if I would have focused hard and, and played try hard, I would have had it. Uh, okay, we've got an Alistair support enemy. Enemy support, okay. Enemy support. I'm just going to throw these out in no particular order. I'm good so at typing. Apologies. Let me know. Uh, we'll go We'll go Zin. Zin Zhao on the enemy. Jungle. Riven top lane. Enemy or yours? Enemy? Uh, enemy. Enemy Riven. Yeah, you have Mao. Yeah, we got Mao. Let's go mid lane LeBlanc. Support Blitz on our team. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, mid lane LeBlanc on, on our team as well. Okay, mirror matchup. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm joking. I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> Takes me a while to get used to people's uh, people's sense of humor. Just like when I, my, my track coach, nobody gets it except for me, so it's hilarious for us too. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, we'll go Siver AD carry enemy. Let's give a solution. And let's give them a Z mid laner. Okay, cool. So I'm already noticing a whole bunch of things uh, just from these team comps. And uh, I was doing about the last guy I coached. Um, we actually talked about, he was like, what should I do was his main focal point. That's all he cared about. And I talked about an idea of win conditions. Are you familiar with that? Yes, I am. And, and it's, what does it mean to you? Because it means something different to every single person I talk to. Uh, identifying in what particular area you can focus on to, to win the game or, or finding, finding who or what. Th that's actually perfect. I'm going to steal that definition and use it from now on. The focus for winning game. Like, four words. That's so simple. But th that yeah. makes so much sense. So, like, uh... Tell me about the enemy team comp. First of all, what what type of damage are they? We can put this next to all of them in parentheses too. What what about Zin Zhao? What is he going to build? Uh, primarily damage. He'll ha or primarily physical. He'll have a little bit of magic in his kit. So he's a, a physical like carry. He might have some on hit stuff because he's yeah. probably building devourer. Yeah. Uh, AP Zin is a thing, but yeah. he'll have oh, he'll have magic damage, but he will be primarily focusing on physical damage. Exactly. About Eighty five percent. Uh, Riven is strictly physical. And so, what? And is she going to be a tank or? She's going to be a carry, maybe a bruiser. Okay, so but but she's going to do damage, right? Yeah, she's she's going to be doing lots of damage. Okay. Uh, Zed is an AD assassin carry, physical assassin carry. So carry assassin. Never sure how to spell assassin. I just type I ass twice and hope for the best. Exactly. Ass, ass in. Okay. What about Sivir? Uh, Sivir, physical damage, range carry with a lot of utility. Okay. What, what type of utility? Uh, team, team fighting utility. Like, wh what does that mean? She, basically with her ultimate, uh, helps her team with positioning... Because it makes him go fast, right? It makes him go fast, yeah. Okay, so Sivir makes makes people go fast. Uh, anything else? Um, not as far as her 
I mean, wave clear. I don't know if we're if we're going that far. Wave clear. Yeah, wave clear is a fantastic thing. So so here let, let's let's start there. Let's talk about. The, we're talking on theirs right now, and then what? What about Alistar? He's he's just a, a tank, right? That has pretty good engage. Right? And heal, good engage, and tank, disengage. Tank engage, utility, whatever. Yep. Okay, so win conditions are going to be the focus for winning the game. What about what are their win conditions? Like, if you had to guess, like, what are they going to try to do to win the game? If you just had to think about how like a team fight would go, like, and if it helps, we can just draw it on the map. Maybe it's like time for an ARAM. You know, we can just put everybody in here and figure out what's going to happen. Like, I don't know if this is helpful to you or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it will help. Because, um, like, w what is this probably going to look like in a team fight? Uh, Alistair and Zinn, for certain, are going to be in the front line. Sivir will be trying to be in their back line. Uh, Zed will try to get through our front line to our back line to get a pick on a squishy, such as LeBlanc or Lucian. Myself, possibly. Um, Alistair will be tanking a uh, front line, trying to keep them off of their back line, and Riven will be. Let, let me ask this a different way. How are they going to engage? Like, what abilities? And are they going to be as five? Are they going to be split pushing? Like, like what is an engage going to look like? Uh, Zed may be split push or Riven, but it's, it's typically going to be a, as many of them as they can get together, engaging <laughs> with a Sivir alt uh, and an Alistair combo. So, oh, this kind of team composition is generally called the death ball composition. And it means you get a little bit ahead, and then you group as five, and you run around the map as a giant ball of death, killing whatever you can run over. So with Sivir, like you mentioned, she has a lot of utility because she hits one button, yells, then everybody on her team goes really, really fast. Alistar, if he can find anybody, you know, he does his QW combo, and they are just stuck and then zed can delete anybody riven jumps on lays all her ccs Zin zao will just have a bunch of damage auto auto you're knocked up into the air so if they catch somebody out like if your top laner is just up here farming by himself and mid just shows her face there alistar can you know sivir alt tower dive jump in and they're probably dead and now a tower is gone right yeah so now let's say that your team isn't derpy and everybody's grouped up as five so I'm going to ask a, a little bit different question. Do you guys have a good tool to get away from that? Um, as a group, not particularly individually. I can leave, LeBlanc can leave, Lucian can dash. And... Yeah, like LeBlanc, you're never going to catch her, right? Unless yeah. like they chain their CC on her. But if they chain their CC on her, she's bad. Yeah. So that's one thing. Uh, Blitzcrank in this composition is a horrible pick, in my opinion. Can you see why? Uh, he's gonna get fucked up. Well, well, who's he gonna pull, right? Like, if he pulls the Riven, is that good or bad for your team? Bad. That's horrible, right? If he pulls the Zin Zhao, is that good or bad for your team? Very bad. If he pulls the Zed closer to your AD carry, is that good or bad for your team? Pretty bad. If he pulls Sivir, is she gonna hit W on her keyboard? <laughs> yes. If he, if he pulls Alistar, what happens? Uh, pulverize GG. So, already, like, this pick is just complete dog shit, in my opinion. Yeah. So now what what happens if like you mentioned Lucian has a dash, LeBlanc has a dash, you have a dash even, you know. So you guys are pretty safe. You're probably not gonna engage on. If they do run at you, you can just jump over a wall or whatever, like it's probably fine. So I, I guess a, a better question is, okay, so what are their win conditions now that we've kind of talked through this? Do they just wanna like group up as quickly as possible in death ball? Could that be one? Yeah, they want to not fall behind, stay even or go ahead, and just group as five because they have a better team fight than us. Yep. So their team fight, I would argue, is better. Now, um, another thing to think about are, are their lose conditions because there there is a way they can lose this game just automatically because they pick shitty champions. Um, but here, let's talk about their other win conditions. What else could they do? Like the, the death ball is an option. But you mentioned it earlier, like when we were asking, are they going to group as five? Are they going to split push? What else could they do? And I'm like thinking of one or two champions in particular. They say Zed and Riven can split, can put pressure in. They could do one three one. They could uh, do... Zen, very good too, right? Yes. So, so let's put split push up here. Yes. And the one three one you don't see as often, just because like there are so many teleports now. And yeah. there, are, there are items like ZZ Rod that can kind of deal with that. But like uh, even a 1-4 could work. Because Zed, if he gets far enough ahead, he can just 1v1 anybody, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so so let's say split push, and then th one of the reasons that's possible is because Sivir has pretty damn good wave clear, right? Yes. Does Zed have pretty good wave clear? Yes. Yep. So does Riven have good wave clear? Nice good wave clear. It, it's okay, but she does have to put herself in danger. But at yeah. the same time, in danger of what? If Blitz pulls her, that's a one team fight, maybe. Yeah. So so that's the thing. But these guys have pretty good wave clear. If you try to jump on them, they have very good disengage. So, so that's something to worry about. So maybe split push is another thing. Uh, what's good for split pushing? Uh, teleport. Teleport, sure. But, uh, like, here, list all the tools that'll be good for split pushing. Teleport is definitely one, because if you're split pushing and, like, you guys just engage on them, they want to teleport back in and help the fight out. So, teleports. And, because Zed mid, usually he doesn't take teleport, right? Usually he takes right. Ignite, because he wants yeah. that kill at level 6. But but what else do they want for that? Uh, not, maybe if we're thinking specifically, Zed would get, like, a Yumus, but... Oh, okay, so like... picture attack damage and attack speed. Split pushing items, AD slash AS. Uh, I'm thinking more objective-wise. Is there anything they would want for split pushing? Uh, two dragons? Yeah, two dragons, exactly. Or Herald, I guess. Two dragons, Herald, or Baron, if okay. the game goes on long enough. Yeah. But uh, two dragons, just in case uh, people on the stream like don't know. First dragon gives you extra damage, both AP and AD. It's a percent multiplier, right? So it's very good if you're trying to take towers, because every auto attack you do does extra damage. The second one means every time you auto attack the tower, uh, it bleeds and takes extra damage. So that's very good, because that means even your tanks can contribute to split pushing. <laughs> So that's exactly it. So um, one thing you might want to do deci decision-wise, just looking at this, we already have like two win conditions, right? Mm -hmm. but not fall behind. Well, how do you beat that one? You, you make them fall behind. You know, that's pretty easy. Yeah. So maybe we like focus on ganking and stuff to fix that. But this one, if they don't have teleports, like maybe Zed has Ignite, mm -hmm. uh, then that's actually good because if he tries to split push, that means you can actually use your idiot Blitzcrank and force 5v4s. Yeah. Um, another thing, if they're doing split pushing items, that might mean they're a little squishier than normal, which might help your Kajix build and might determine what items you get. Yeah. Because um, if they're not buying tank items, that means they'll be easier to blow up. But yeah. this also tells me you want to do a very good job controlling Dragon, because if they are looking to split push, maybe Zed does have teleport for whatever reason. Like, that that has a light bulb go off in my mind saying, okay, I want to focus on Dragon, make sure they don't get a single one. Another thing, if you control the dragon and that's gone, that means split pushing will be a shittier option for them, right? So now they can only do one thing, that death ball, and that just means you guys play a little bit safer until you know where they are on the map. Okay. Does, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. Uh, what other win conditions? Are there other things they can do? Uh, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just asking, I don't know. Zed can roam and gank and put a lane ahead. Well, yeah, but I mean th that's true of anybody. Like, <laughs> yeah, like like not the obvious things. I I'm saying like specific to their team comp. Uh, like I like what's don't... another thing uh, Zin Zhao wants to do? Like, what's one of his power spikes? And and think that he is going to go say to devour. So like, what is he going to want to focus on? Uh, dragons, scuttles, and farming. Say to devour. He wants to farm. So right now there are two win conditions kind of here. Zen sated because if he does get sated and Blade of the Ruined King, Alistar can tank Baron for him and they can just duo that whenever they want. Yeah. In like about twelve seconds in the current state of the game. <laughs> but right now, this is saying, Hey, I want to farm dragons. This is saying, Hey, I want to farm dragons. So two thirds of their win conditions that we're just talking about looking at their team comp are, hey, I want to control dragon. What does that tell you as a jungler? Uh go kill dragon. Or yeah. keep pressure on dragon. Keep pressure on Dragon, don't let them do that. Also, if you keep pressure on Dragon, that's a great way to make them fall behind, because you have Dragon and they don't. Yeah. And maybe you're killing the Sivir over and over again, so suddenly she doesn't have Wave Clear, so now Split Pushing is done, just because the AD Carry will be down here by the Dragon. So, so do you see how this is kind of forming, going back to the decisions? How are they going to win? How are they going to take those towers, take that inhibitor, take the two towers in front of the Nexus, and then kill the Nexus? Well, yeah. they're going to do this stuff. So how do you stop that stuff? Yeah. Already, like, just looking at this comp, this is telling me that I want to, like, stay around here as a jungler. Now, what about what about their comp is, like, a, a lose condition? Like, if anything happens, do they lose? Uh, I see one thing in particular that will make them lose. And it has something to do with, with 
a word that is highlighted very often. I'm stumped. Starts with a P. Physical armor. Physical armor. Okay, so who on your team is tanky? Maokai. Maokai. What happens if Maokai gets 600 armor? Uh, he doesn't take a lot of damage. Are they ever going to kill him? <laughs> Probably not unless he's an idiot. Probably not unless he's an idiot, but even if he is an idiot. Ha ha did you watch the LCS over the past like month or so at all? E vaguely. Okay. I'll send you a, a game, but there's one game where I think it was the Immortals. Uh, they picked a triple eighty carry comp, meaning they had three eighty carry. It was like Kindred Jungle. They had like uh, Lucian mid, and then like a Sivir or something bot or Jin or something bot. Uh, the enemy team had a Maokai. He built like four hundred armor, and they could not kill him. It was adorable. He he just went in one v four whenever he wanted to in a pro game. So already I'm saying like uh, a win condition for you guys. Here, let's start typing out your win conditions. Maokai build X armor. If he gets like three or four armor items, the enemy team can't kill you. So so that's one thing. So right now, another one is you could, and here I'm just going to number these out. Sorry, my organization is a little poor. Hey, amen to that. But right now we mentioned that you could counter these guys, right? So if you controlled dragons, because remember Zen Zhao is going to be focused on farming dragons, uh, that'll take pressure away from top lane where Maokai wants to be, and that'll also like put the enemy team behind, right? Yes. So, uh, are you kind of seeing what you need to do in this specific game? Uh, control dragons. Control dragons. Make sure Maokai doesn't fall far enough behind that he can, you know, not buy all that armor. Yes. Same thing, like Blitzcrank could buy a bunch of armor too. Like maybe yeah. it's a frozen heart or something and that'll yeah. help. But at the same time he's a support. He picked a horrible champion into this comp because if he pulls anybody, you guys lose. So Hey, Bloodlath Rat, thanks for the follow. But um sorry, I got my follow animation going, so But um but already that's what I'm thinking in my head. Because remember we're talking about what do we need to do to win the game? Decision wise, what do I need to make? So what you need to do is make your Maokai strong, because if he just gets to a certain point, if he gets like Sunfire Cape, maybe a Frozen Heart, maybe a Thornmail even, because how many of the champions on the enemy team like auto-attacking? I count three, you know? Half, yeah. yeah, three, right? Three and a half, yeah, technically a half, I guess. Riven can use her auto-attack animations to cancel all her combos and stuff if she's good. But if he gets to a certain point armor-wise, like, the enemy team won't be able to kill him, and that means he can just stand, he can literally plant himself as a tree in front of a tower, and they won't be able to do shit. And if they try to jump on you with the Sivir ultimate, he just Ws to whoever doesn't have a spell shield and completely shuts them down, and there's nothing they can really do. So, in my mind, I'm thinking that's what I need to do. I just need to stall out the game so that Maokai can get strong. I need to control dragons to keep Zen Zhao's Devourer build weak. Uh, I need to control dragons to make sure, like, when they fall behind and can't death ball, that Zed isn't strong enough to 1v1 a Maokai when he split pushes, because your Maokai is probably taking teleport if he isn't a complete moron. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. is it all kind of coming together now? Yeah. Okay, so um, knowing this, and, and let's just let's just keep it to this for now, because you can do other win conditions, but really your win condition here is don't fall behind, stall until Ma Maokai buys armor. So, <laughs> like, that's not that crazy to do. Yeah. And what's nice is since Zin Zhao is going to be farming the jungle because he picked a Devourer jungler, that means he's probably not going to be ganking very much. Which means, like, if Zed pushes up too much or gets greedy and tries to kill LeBlanc, who is the the heart... I can't say names properly, LeBlanc. The, one of the hardest champions in the frickin' game to, like, lock down. That means you can just, like, camp mid, camp bot, dance between those two lanes and just put a lot of pressure on the map, make them fall behind. Make them start raging at Zen to farm, to stop farming and gank for them. Especially down in gold where people don't have the emotional, you know... What's stability. Good word? Stability, that's fantastic. <laughs> uh, emotional stability to realize that they need to do things like these win conditions. And remember, this is a uh, videotape, so you, uh, don't take notes or anything. I'll send you a link to the, the stream video afterwards. Yeah, I'm taking very minuscule notes. Cool, just, cool. Just like highlight stuff. But in this situation, just because they're all physical damage, you have an unkillable, arguably overpowered tank this patch. And one of the reasons he's unkillable, if you get all that armor... 
it'll reduce all their damage, but also every, like, four abilities or whatever, his passive means he'll heal for a percent of his health. So if he has, like, Sunfire Cape, Randuin's, you know, all these items. I, I guess uh, the Glacial Shroud into the Iceborne Gauntlet is still, like, the meta right now. Like, most people will go, like, Sunfire Cape, uh, Iceborne Gauntlet, pick other items. Like, if there's a, an AP champion on the other team, Abyssal Scepter or something like that, and yeah. then just be unkillable. But he can buy things, like, instead of that Abyssal, like a Randuin's Omen, have more health, more armor, more u uh, utility for your team if he uses the active. Yeah. So if he does that, nobody will be able to do anything. And you're a damage jungler, right? Yeah. So that means if they miss position, Sivir has, like, one escape and a spell shield. And if she's using her escape to engage her ultimate, cool, she's lunch for you. LeBlanc, you know, she can burst people. Lucian, he can burst people. So uh, l let's talk about what else you, you want to do. Like, who on your team is, like... Uh, is worth ganking for, I guess. Like, from what we talked about. Uh, Lucian is always strong in most phases, most every phase of the game. And uh, Let's talk about, like, first 5-10 minutes of the game. Where do you want to put pressure on the map? And and first of all, I'm thinking about win conditions. Can the enemy team take a dragon in the first 5-10 minutes of the game? Mm, probably not. I'm probably kidding. not. Like, 90% of the time, Xin Zhao is not going to solo it at level 4 or something. Like, one of yeah. those idiot new new mains. Yeah. So as long as you, like, keep a ward there just to be sure, like, you're probably safe, right? So yeah. you don't need to worry about controlling dragons. Maybe Herald? Maybe? But it's pretty obvious when, like, the top laner is gone for a minute, like, what they're doing. Yeah. So, so are you free to go anywhere on the map? For the most part. Okay, do you want to gank for a LeBlanc early? Uh, not typically. Why? Uh, doesn't have a whole lot of damage to follow up, plus Zed is pretty slippery. Um, another reason, will she have problems in this lane? Um, I guess I don't know the answer to that one. Uh, it depends on the LeBlanc player. Yeah. So, like, like Zed, for the most part, as soon as he hits 6, you know what he's going to do, right? He's going to all in with his Ignite and his ult. Yep. Uh, LeBlanc, for the most part, is pretty tricky and pretty safe, and she can just get free harass off. So she should be able to whittle him down uh, for the time being. This lane will either be even or in her favor until 6. Okay. If that makes sense. She'll yeah. also, like, hit tab, check her items. If she is not rushing a Zonia's into Zed, like, figure she's going to start feeding post-6. Yeah. But until then, I would ignore the LeBlanc just because in, like... 60% of the time, she'll go even or win the lane. And then if you have somebody that's just learning LeBlanc in your promo games, you're just shit out of luck, and you'll want to be, like, ganking another lane anyway. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. now that we know LeBlanc's off the table, you know, here, we can just delete her from our, our thing for now, I guess. Uh, who are you going to gank for? Uh, well, Maokai being a win condition, um, he's got some pretty good lockdown as well. Yeah, uh, lockdown, CC, right? And he's up against uh, a ribbon. Is she a little slippery? Slippery and squishy. Squishy, yes, yes. Your Kajiks, remember. When is she slippery, though? Uh, level 2, 3. Level 3, probably. Uh, what abilities is she going to level first? Uh, and this is fine if you don't know this. Yeah, probably going to start with Q. Yep. Uh, depending, quote-unquote, on how it went level 1, she might get her E second, but she could probably typically get her W second. Yeah, and also, you mentioned that you're duo of the Maokai, so what can you ask him at any time during the game? Hey, how's the lane going? Yeah, or what abilities did she max? Or where are her wards? Yeah. You know? Yep. So let's say she didn't get her E next. She has her Q and she has her W. What does her W do? Ribbon, I'm talking about. Uh, stun, attack damage, and stun. Uh, attack damage and stun at close range, right? Yep. So does it make sense in here? Let me reset Rift Get real quick. Uh, so let's say here's where the lanes are. It's like three minutes in the game. You did your Krugs, you did your Red, you did Blue just because you're looking to, to gank level three. And you're up here, and the, the lane is like here. Does it make sense to gank top? Yes. Where's the enemy jungler at this point? Probably at the red buff. Really? Are you sure? I'm going to say no, I guess, because you make me question it. But Well, what what type of jungler is he? Uh, uh, sated jungler? Yep. Uh, do you know what, what jungle paths sated junglers usually take? Uh, no, I typically thought... I mean, I guess my assumption that was most people start uh, whatever side is bot side for the easier leash. Uh, 
Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Uh, first homework thing, and, and write this down, okay? Will do. Um, time out. Someone's asked me if I charge for coaching. Sorry, multitasking. That's rude. Uh, okay. I want you to watch a few other streams of different styles of junglers. You don't have to watch them for freaking 10 hours a week, but I yeah. want you to just get an idea of what different styles of junglers do. So for Devourer junglers, I want you to watch um, Cowsep. Uh, he's a, a goofy guy on the Korean server. He speaks English. He dresses like a cow. His stream is just insane with special effects and, and bullshit, if you're not familiar. <laughs> but he is one of the best junglers in the world at clearing. And if you notice how he clears, pretty much any uh, jungler that builds Sated Devourer should be doing the same thing he does. And generally they do. But what he does is he optimizes getting his Sated jungle item as quickly as possible. So that means buying Devourer as quickly as possible. So if you were going to buy Devourer as quickly as possible, would you go, like, camp, buff, buff, and then look for a gank? Uh, you'd probably go camp, buff, camp, camp, buff, camp. Exactly. Or there's even something else you can do. Like some junglers, like Nocturne, for example, he can go Sated, he can go Warrior, he can go a bunch of things. Yeah. But if they have a power spike at level 6, like Nocturne is a good example because at level 6 he unlocks his alt and that's pretty much a sure kill if he's not bad, right? Yeah. But um, what he will do actually, if he's good, and this is a little bit risky, but but it's good to know that, that certain junglers will do this, is he'll go camp, 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 buy... Uh, get like the other half of his jungle item, get a pink ward or something, and then he'll come back and do camp, buff, camp, camp, buff, camp, and then he does one more camp and he's level 6 at like 5 minutes and 55 seconds into the game. With double buff. Yeah. And so there are some junglers that do that. So knowing that Zen Zhao is like a save devour jungler, he could be doing something like that. Because that is the fastest way to get gold. And it's the fastest way to get to his late game power spike. Uh, so if you don't know where he is, are there things you could have done to like figure that out? I could ward. Yeah, you could ward. Oh, who else can ward on your team? Anyone. Anyone. So um, one thing you can do, like your LeBlanc, she's pretty tricksy, right? She can come over here. You can ask her to put a ward right here. Or you can ask her to put a ward right here at like three minutes. Because if she's good she should be putting a ward somewhere in here at three minutes anyway because three minutes and 30 seconds is gank a clock for every jungler in the game because since season two the optimal path has been camp buff buff gank top or gank mid because you're on this side of the map right yeah mm -hmm. hey what's up cubal mania good to see you my friend so anyway if, if you do that and I'll, I'll send you a link to calcep i'll send you a link to a few other junglers that do different styles of junglers if you understand where they are That'll help you out. Because let's say, you know, this is Zin Zhao, and he did do exactly what you said. He did camp, buff, buff. And then he's maybe going over here because he sees that Maokai just engaged, and he's running towards the lane. Uh, do you know if you win a 2v2 with a Maokai and then Zin Zhao who has damage and Ribbon who has damage? Because um, this is going back to one of your questions you asked, I think. Yeah. Uh if I had to guess, you know, I, I might be wrong. If I if I had to guess, it could go either way, um, but they, depending on their positioning, if I cut Zen off and get some damage in early and have him collapse, it could go well. Uh, the, the correct answer is exactly what you said. It depends. Like if Riven was at a hundred health, sure, maybe you can jump in and execute her real quick, and then you have a two v one. But if it's like even if both of the top laners are full health, both you and Zen are full health, I think it goes a little bit in favor of Riven and Zen. Yeah. You know, best case scenario, both you and Mal burn flashes and have to recall, and then miss some minions. Mm -hmm. So just knowing that, it, now you personally, because you can't control like what your other teammates do, because maybe like, shut up, noob jungler, don't tell me where to ward. <laughs> maybe come in here and put a ward in the tri brush. And then if you see a Zen Zhao like walking through that, maybe you abort the gank. You know, just because you don't want to give Riven double buff and, you know, first blood and all that good stuff because it's literally a, one of the win conditions we talked about to just let Maokai build X armor because the entire enemy team is doing physical damage and if he gets to a certain point in the game, they just won't be able to win. Yeah. So so that kind of thinking is good. But early game, we're just talking about, okay, where can you gank? Mid is probably out because LeBlanc should be fine on her own and also it'll be hard to kill the Zed, maybe. But... um top he has a lot of cc so if zen is doing the standard devourer jungler like slow farm thing he'll be doing this he'll be doing this he'll be doing his wolves and walking this way when you're finishing up blue he's probably going to be doing his chickens when you start the gank 
So generally, what you're talking about, this should be completely safe to do against Zin Zhao, just if he's doing the Devourer build. And you know he's probably on this because either LeBlanc put a ward here for you here. Well, we'll say she put one right there because that's the, the place mid laner should put wards for you around three minutes. Yeah. So if you're up here doing that, you see he's doing this, you know this is just, just free. Worst case scenario, you burn Ribbons, you know, Flash, maybe she has to teleport back to lane, something like that. In either case, Maokai is now winning the lane, and that's what you yeah. want. Yep. And and how would he? How would you engage this gank, just so I can figure out if you know how to gank? Uh, you you probably do, but I'm, I'm just asking. Yeah. Uh, depending on her position, if she's roughly even and I can sneak in through the tri brush, I could sneak in behind her. Otherwise, uh -huh. I could go through river uh, brush and have him lock her down first, or if she's pushed far that's, enough. That's what I was looking for. Are you engaging, or is he engaging? He's engaging, I'm following. He's engaging. How is he going to engage? What's it going to look like if he has good mechanics? Uh, walk towards her, press W, yep. stutter behind her, cue her back. Exactly, and throw a sapling where he thinks she's going to run to, right? Yeah. Yep. It's perfect, and then as soon as he W's in, that's when you come in. Do you immediately jump in? No, I do not. Oh, cool. You know how to play Kajix. Good job. What do you do? Uh, you walk in and wait for her to blow her escapes and yep. then leap to catch up her gap oh, potions. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Th that's exactly what you want to do. Okay. So going back to what should we do decision-wise in the first five to ten minutes of the game, ganking for Maokai top is amazing for all the reasons we talked about. Because if he can get the X armor, that's great. You don't have to worry about controlling dragons early. So that's great. They're all physical damage. So if he gets armor, you just win. And because of Zin Zhao being a devourer jungler and wanting to farm... Like, yeah, he's probably going to be on his chickens 70% of the time. And I don't know, maybe he's bad and he's doing exactly what you talked about. If you put your ward here, you'll be able to see and you'll know, like, hey, I, I'm probably not going to win this fight because they have two damage champions and I'm the only damage champion and Maokai is just a tree. You know, they, they all have swords. Swords cut down trees. You know, that logic, maybe <laughs> we back out. But, you know, at the same time, if you just see him there, it's like, okay, whatever. I just go back to farming. And then he picked an inefficient jungle route. It, if anything, you're ahead because he's going to get his devourer later. Yeah. And then you go bot. So, like, let's say let's say you did the same kind of thing. You don't see anything top because you see this guy just camping this tri brush. Maybe he's AFK watching YouTube videos of the new Miley Cyrus video. I don't know. But you see that, and you're like, okay, I don't want to gank top. Uh, what about bot? Is your bot lane decent for ganking? Yes. Why? Uh, hopefully, Blitz can land a hook. Um, otherwise, they have more damage than a Sivir Alistair early game. So who is Blitz going to hook early game? This is pre-level 6, mind you. Um, he's going to try and hook the AD carry, but she can shield it, so he might try to hook Alistair instead. So here, here's take. another question. When can he and when can't he hook Sivir? Like, let's say he 100% he, accuracy on the hook. He is never going to miss it. The only thing that will get in the way of the hook happening is if she spell shields correctly. Um, first, first question: When does she get spell shield? Second question: um, What is the cooldown? Level three, twenty six seconds at level one or twenty four? Actually, that's pretty good. I think you're right. I honestly don't know. But before every game, uh, if I'm playing against a Sivir, I want to know that. So I will just pull up the the league wiki and look at it because this shit changes all the time, right? And you only want to yeah. remember this if you're like super tryharding. But let's just look it up. So you said 26 or 24. The cooldown is actually 22 seconds at level 1. But so, right. so that'd be good to know, right? Yes. So just in the loading screen, maybe like get a sticky note, put it on one of your monitors. Just type Sivir Spell Shield cooldown at level 1, you know, 22 seconds. Just just do that when you play it. It'll help you out. Yeah. And you'll probably have two minutes before the game starts anyway, right? Yeah, and like the the stream is guessing, like Q-Ball Mania guessed 20 seconds. Even that's safe, because it's less than the cooldown. But yeah. you know, if you know exactly what it is and she uses it, then you're like, oh, I have 22 seconds to do whatever I want. Uh, what is Blitz's uh, cooldown on Q, do you know? I want to say 18. 18, let's check. I think it's less than that. I want to say like 12 seconds or something. Nope, I am wrong. It is 20 seconds. All right. But at the same time, uh, do most Blitzcranks build cooldown reduction in their runes? Uh, typically 5%. 5%, actually typically 10%. 5% okay. is from a, a darker time when you could get 5% uh, CDR from your masteries. So if you s ever see that, it means the player hasn't updated their runes since like season 5. Okay. And, and that's a good thing. That means you're playing against like a U. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, but yeah, 20 seconds. So what, what I'm saying here is, like, if he hooks, the, the shield is probably going to be up by the next time he hooks, right? Yep. And again, this is something I would just look up if I didn't have it memorized in my head, or I'm not, like, duo with the guy. I'm like, hey, when's your hook up? You know, on Skype or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so that's good to know, because if it was less, if it was, like, 12 seconds or something, because he has 40% CDR because he's magic, then, like, you'd be able to, like, hook, and then be like, oh, I can hook again before your spell shield's up, and that would be great. Yeah. Okay, so so that's one thing to think about. So now another thing is, do Sivers actually get spell shield level three? Um, against the Blitzcrank, I would imagine. Against the Blitzcrank, yeah. But are people smart when they play this game, or do they blindly follow builds they got off a of Mobifier? People blindly follow builds. Yep. So what I'm going to do, um, if you're watching my screen share right now, uh, yep. Champion.gg. Have you heard of this site? I have. I use that one in op.gg. It is fantastic. So what I'm doing is looking at this. So it looks like uh. Your average player does indeed get E level 3, but a good player, uh, the one with the 55.55% win rate, gets it at level 4. Okay. So if they're like reading from some challenger build, you know, it's going to be at, at level 4. So if you go down there at level 3, Blitz can engage safely. Okay. But again, I don't know. Against a Blitzcrank, like if I'm playing Sivir, I might get it level 2. Shit, I don't want to mess around with that. I'll just play a little safer, whatever. Yeah. So, I don't know. Ask your team if she has shield. That's a, a good way to do it. Even if you're not duo with them, just type it. Yep. Okay, so pre-level 3, Blitzcrank should be able to land a hook. That's that the roundabout thing that we were trying to get to. Like, just if... Because she won't have shield, right? What about Alistar? Alistar is the support, I believe. Yep. Uh, could he pull Alistar? And would that be okay? Early game? Um... Sometimes no. Uh, if he pulls it into both and it's position pouring where he can get a good pull to get a head start on them. Um, but Alistair is not too tanky early, so if I'm down there, then yes. Yeah, in all honesty, like, who would you want to kill, like, in a level 3 gank? Alistar or Sivir? Or let me put it this way who is the higher probability of securing the kill, Alistar or Sivir, pre level, like, level 3 or lower? Who are, who are we more likely to kill, or who yep. are... The, okay, uh, Alistair. Alistair, exactly. Now, once he hits six, <laughs> he's just going to pop his ultimate and walk away, like, spamming. You can't milk those, right? Yeah. So it's not even worth it. But before <laughs> that happens, yeah, I mean, have Blitz pull the Alistair and murder him. You know, Blitz pulls the Alistair, he panic, you know, headbutt pulverizes, and then cool. Now he's on cooldown for 10, 20 seconds or whatever. So... I think, yeah, ganking bot would be very useful. Another thing, Lucian has that nice little double tap, right? So you have some extra damage early. Sivir, you know, she doesn't have a lot of damage early because she really relies on critical strike chance and her W ricochet to do all the damage in team fights. She yeah. won't have any. She'll have a Doran's Blade. Yeah. You know, so that that's really good. It's a low risk, high reward kind of gank. And remember, one of your win conditions is controlling Dragon to keep pressure off Maokai, to set Zen Zhao's Devourer build behind it, to make it so they can't split push with the second Dragon tower pushing buff. So yeah, so walk me through. How would you gank down here, and when would you do it? And and it, it, this is in an ideal world. So let's say you could have started anywhere, because you can. Because in this game, you can do whatever the hell you want. So where are you going to start? Uh, I always start bot side. Why? Uh, because double T AD carry bot lane, uh, stronger leash, so I lose. Okay, stronger leash. Uh, that's a good reason. Do you have to start bot side? You do not have to, I guess, technically. So, like, let's say this. Let's say you said you duo with your top laner all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Um, What's another thing you could do? Because I'm assuming you duo with him because he doesn't suck. Exactly. He doesn't suck, right? So does he necessarily need ganks to play against Riven? Or a better way to put it, let's say he dies twice in lane. Is he still going to be effective at doing his job as Maokai? Yeah. Yeah, right? So so what's one thing you could do instead of starting bot? Hey, Maokai, help me with Gromp. Why Gromp? Uh, so I can get level 2. Yeah, so you can get level 2. But I mean, why Gromp over like Wolves, over like Blue? Uh, because you're playing Kha'Zix, I'll give you a hint. Because the dub, or the W, the uh, passive from the smite? Uh, passive from the smite will speed up your clear, yes, but also does your Q and oh, isolation and stuff uh, do extra damage to a thing that's alone or things that are near friends? The isolation, yeah. Yeah, so you'll have a, a pretty damn fast clear on Gromp because it's one thing instead of two things, and Maokai can stack saplings, and he's not an idiot, so you won't need to gank him level three. Yeah. So 
thinking about that, what can you tell your bot lane to do? Uh, I will be coming bot lane after red buff. Yep. So don't push. Yeah, what else can you tell them to do? Level one. I can tell them to, I don't know, to ward? Tell them to take Krugs. Take Krugs, okay. And if they're like, I can't do it, it's too hard! Tell them to take Little Krug. Don't, don't <laughs> tell them to man up or don't, don't like, berate them any. If they're bad, they'll, like, whine at you. But if they take Krugs, uh, when are they going to hit level two? A lot sooner. A lot sooner. And uh, does Blitzcrank like having a level advantage against the enemy team? He does, because he's got another CC with his knockup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the enemy team is behind in levels, uh, and you're doing this, and you're doing blue, uh, when are you going to be doing your red? Like, w about what time? Oh, God, I guess I'm not going to... I'm going to spitball 240. 240. So when are you going to be done with red? Two or three, three minutes. Three minutes. Let's call it three minutes. Where is Zen going to be... Uh, like, where is Zen going to start 90% of the time? Gromp. Gromp. Okay, what's he going to do next? Blue. Blue. What's he going to do next? Because he's a devour jungler, and we just talked about this. Wolves. Wolves. Cool. And where is he going to go right at three minutes when you're done with red? Chickens. Chickens. Is this a good gank or a bad gank, knowing what you know about where the jungler is on the map? It's a good gank, because nobody can collapse. Because there's no counter gank. Uh, your bot lane is going to proc two before the enemy team. They might proc three before the enemy team depending on how hard Sivir's pushing or not pushing. Yeah. So, I mean, are you starting to see, like, how the decisions can come together and how you can snowball little advantages? Yes. Okay, cool. Now, I I'm getting all this just from, like, thinking about this versus this and what I need to do to win the game. This is all things I'm thinking about before the game even starts. So we, we talked about a couple options, and we're just leaving LeBlanc to do her own thing, because even if I give her gold, a good Zed player will probably kill her at level 6 anyway. Yeah. So I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to assume you can go even. Whatever. But I know my Maokai, who I'm duo with, he's a win condition, because if he gets enough armor, all the physical people won't be able to do anything, and I know my bot lane will be good to get rolling, because I want to control dragons, so if like we end up shitting on the enemy team, Zed can't split push with dragon buffs. So, thinking about that, uh, which of the two would you want to start at? Would you want to start at Krugs, or would you want to start at your Gromp? Um, my assumption is I would want to start at Gromp since Maokai is the strong win condition. Yeah, definitely. Now, a another thing, um, let's say Zin does the same thing, because another thing you'll notice if you watch Kalsep is sometimes he starts at Krugs, because uh, he really likes the, the jungle passive from the Krugs. Because Zin is a attack speed jungler, right? Yeah. Yep. So, done. what is one thing you can do to figure out where he is starting? Uh, I can drop a ward on his buff at 120. Yeah, where? Which buff? Where? Um, the one close to the side I'm starting. Okay, cool. So uh, you're starting up here? Uh, at Gromp, you said? Uh, if no, I said Krug, I think. Oh, you're starting Krugs this time? Yeah, so Ward Blue. Okay, so Ward Blue, where? Like here? Uh, just on the buff from behind. On the buff from behind? I disagree. Okay. There's a better spot. I'm going to tell you where it is. Also, um, is this... There's one thing you should always do with a Blitzcrank on your team level 1. Do you know what that is? Is it invade? It is invade. It is always invade. Uh, so where what are you guys going to do? Like pre-game chat and, and how is your invade pack going to go? Uh, we're going to go into the pixel brush. Okay. And then from there, typically we go from behind and then around. Cool, cool, cool. So, and the enemy team probably knows this because they played a few games and Blitzcrank is common down there. So are they going to be there to contest 90% of the time? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, for, yeah. For, for them, anyway. Well, I guess down in gold, maybe. In diamond, if, if you see like a Blitzcrank on the other team, you're like, oh, they're going to invade. We should put a ward here, we should put a ward here, and we should just run away. Or we should put a ward yeah. here, we should put a ward here, and we should just not be there. Yeah. But so... Um, one thing that you can realize is you don't have to just put a ward here. And I'm using this rip kit thing if you're wondering what's going on here. We're coaching a guy on Skype right now. But um, if you put a ward here, okay, cool, at 120, that means it expires at 220. That means uh, if he gets his gromp done at like 155 or so or 150, if he gets a really good leash, you only have like 30 seconds to see if he's on blue. And maybe he's doing that thing we talked about where he goes gromp to wolves and does the fast level six. You would actually miss him. So knowing that, where's a better place to put the ward, especially since you're going to be walking all the way around everything? On the edge of the blue brush? Yeah, I would put it right here, actually. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. 
And the reason it can you guess the reason why? Because you can see both of them. Because you can see both of them exactly. It's not not freaking rocket science. But now knowing this, like uh, if I'm trying to plan out where I'm going to gank, like level three, or if I'm going to gank level three, and I think you should be ganking level three as Kajix against a jungler that's just going to be farming. Easy. Um, you, you want to know if he's starting here or if he's starting here. Because let let's say he's starting here. Uh, which like, let's say he's literally AFK right here from, like, one minute onwards against a Blitzcrank because he's bad. Uh, if you don't, like, pull him, like, what camp should you start on? I should start on the Krug. Why? Because I blindly follow mobile fire guides and I don't have an answer for you. Yeah, yeah, I, I disagree. Okay. I would start Gromp with your Maokai giving you a leash, like, maybe throw three saplings or something on it, maybe once Q first because he's not bad. You can do that. Um, I, but I would do uh, start Gromp, and then I would go blue, red, look for a gank. And the reason being, remember, we said he was going to be here, 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 okay. and then moving here. Okay, so, so there's no chance of him collapsing. So there's no chance of a counter gank. Okay. Now, now let's say let's say you put that ward down and you don't see him there. And you put this at 120 and it's now, you know, like 140 when the, the camps all spawn. And he's still not there. He's not starting blue or Gromp. Where is he probably? Krug. Krugs. Where is he going to be for his next camp? Red. Where is he going to be for chickens? Chickens. Chickens, right. I mean, I, sorry, I'm like giving you away, but it's not <laughs> freaking rocket yeah. science. Yeah. Maybe blue for his third camp. Let's say he's at blue just for, for shits and giggles. So if you start here, here, and here, he's actually going to be mirroring you. And if you go for a gank right now, maybe he's on Gromp. Maybe he can come through and counter gank. Yeah. So that one ward early, which you should be getting anyway because you're going to invade with Blitzcrank because you have a Blitzcrank and you talked about it in the pregame chat and so nobody's AFK, everyone's on the same page, tells you what side to start on. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. So if you see him like here or here, like it, it just gives you different options. So like you could start Crux. That's a thing you could do, but I think you're giving stuff up because if you do that Gromp start... Remember, it lets your bot lane take one or two of these guys, and then that sets up that beautiful level three gank for you, like right around three minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. So first, like five to 10 minutes, that's what I, I think your mind should be at. Get a ward here. You don't need multiple wards, just one here, because if he's not here, remember that one minus math we talked about at the beginning of the stream? Mm -hmm. He's probably, if he's not here, he's probably here. Yep. That ward tells you if you don't see him, he's probably on the other side of the map. And maybe he is the craftiest jungler in the universe and he's starting wolves and he just blew your mind, but that's going to happen 1% of the time. <laughs> so you're playing for the, the make the decision that'll be right, you know, 50% plus of the time. Like, and 80% of the time, this is exactly what's going to happen. You go here, 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 be on the other side of the map while you're killing the enemy team bot lane for first blood. And that's really good in gold because if you remember to the very first question I asked you, how do you win the game? Uh, the second answer is you make the enemy team surrender. And if they're raging at their jungler at four minutes, you're well on your way to that one. Okay, that was a lot I just threw at you. Um, it's a lot. Did you get all that? Do you have questions? For the most part, I got most of it. Um, okay, and, and this is a recorded video, so I'll throw that at you afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you... Uh, so I can. It's It won't be pretty, but... Nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, so... We we just ended with him. He's starting Krugs. Yeah. I'm sorry. He's starting Gromp, and then so I also start Gromp so that we're on the opposite side of the map and he can't counter gank. Yeah, sure. So what if he's doing Krugs? Is that what you're trying to get at? Yeah, I I forgot that half. Okay, so you can think of it two ways. Um, what do you want to do? Uh, do you think he's going to be ganking at level three? Um, honestly, at this Elo, yes. I know a lot of them okay. farm, but a lot of them try to show up at level 3 because they want to not be yelled at by their team for ganking. Actually, that's a good point. Sorry, I'm, I've been playing with a lot of diamond people. So every Zen and diamond would be like power farming his entire jungle. But if you're saying that in gold, Zen's going to be ganking level 3, he's going to be doing Krugs, red, blue, then where's he going to gank? Bot lane. Bot lane. Uh, if he ganks mid, is he going to get anything? No, it's a LeBlanc. No, it's a LeBlanc, right? So he's going to be ganking bot lane because he probably has at least half a brain. Yeah. So if you think he's going to be ganking bot lane, and there's even like the premise of him ganking bot lane, and you have that word here, so you know he's not starting Gromp, where should you start? I should start Krug. Why? And you might be right, I'm just asking why. So that I can gank the top lane because Maokai is a win condition. Yeah, what else should you do though? Like if you know that this is happening? 
Like, let's say it's three minutes and 15 seconds. You know he just finished blue. What should you be doing, uh, like, maybe in chat or maybe with the pings on the map? I forgot already. Uh, I, I would just type, hey, Zen is at blue, care bot. Oh, okay. Or spam ping danger at blue and be like, hey, Zen's there, even okay. if he's not. Just say he's there. Because yep. what that'll do is make it so the Blitzcrank doesn't flash pull the enemy Alistar into his Lucian, and then Zim shows up behind Tribrush, and then right when you're killing the Ribbon, you know, the enemy team gets first blood. Yeah. So just very simple. If you know he started up here, and you know he's probably going to gank, even if you just spam ping Danger Blue, you know, still, he's probably on that side of the map, right? Because maybe he just did chickens, and now he's, like, moving over to wolves. So you're not wrong, like, 80% of the time doing that. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying start Krugs, and then you're going to do red, then you're going to do your blue, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how much health will you have if you do that clear? Not a lot. Not a lot. So is there something else you should be doing? Uh, the Scuttler? I would do the Scuttler. Um, there's another reason I would do the Scuttler. Let's say the Ribbon has a brain. What, what did she do, like, right around three minutes? Uh, what did the River Brush? Yeah, probably, like, right here, right? Yep. How, how long does that last? About 65 seconds at that point. Uh, 60 seconds. Exactly a minute, I think. I, I know it Isn't scales it? up a little with level, but she's probably like level two. Okay. So so figure 60 seconds, just to okay. make it easy. Yeah. So if you're doing the scuttle, make sure you're not seen by that. So keep it on this half of the map, right? Mm -hmm. And then right around, if she did it at three, and remember, you're, you're duo of your Maokai, right? So he can tell you when she goes to ward if he has a brain, which he should. Yeah. Uh, and if she doesn't, great. You know, just go up and kill her. Yeah. But ask him if she has a ward. And if you're low mana, you're doing the scuttle anyway. You have blue buffs so if you blow your W to heal or whatever, and you're right-clicking and your jungle item is healing you, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. But then do that. Spam ping that, you know, Zin is probably going to come and try to kill your Blitzcrank. So you're fine. And then you do that. Now, another thing. Uh, what happens if Zin shows? You know, Blitzcrank wards up here, and then you see Zin just sitting in this bush. Well, what's one thing you can do? Uh, like, for starters, ping to make sure they see him. Uh... This is going to be a nitty-gritty thing. This is like a, a diamond trick. Well, yeah, ping to make sure they see him. Definitely, 100% do that every time because it's it's gold and people probably won't be looking at their map. Yeah. But uh, you as a jungler who has coaching, who used to be plat, who, who knows superior mechanics and stuff, what's uh, give me three things that you can do by clicking on Zen and, and looking at him from a strategic uh, standpoint. Checking his CS. Checking his CS. So what does the CS tell you? Uh, where and what he's farmed. Yep. So that, by the way, is amazing that you said that because nobody I've coached has ever said that before. But that is exactly what I was going to recommend. Remember how Zin is a devourer jungler? What does he want to do? He wants to farm. So if you take maybe the big raptor here, what does that do to him? It sets him back quite a bit. Do you take all the raptors? I do not. Why? Because it would reset, and I typically would want to leave three up because he's not an AoE jungler, so it would take him even longer. Nice, nice. I was going to ask that. Do you leave one or do you leave three? You leave three because he has to single target attack each one, and it'll take him longer and piss him off. Yes. So very good, very good. So if you notice that he has two plus three is five, plus three more is eight CS, what do you know is up? Uh, every other, or Raptors, rather. Raptors, probably Krugs, because there's a minute 40 second cooldown in that. Yeah. So one thing you can do, especially if you're waiting out a ward that Riven just put down, is boop, boop, gank. You know, and then there you're done. Yeah. But uh, another thing that you want to look at, there's another thing you want to look at before you make that call. Uh, what is it? It's a very obvious thing. I'm going to guess health and level? Nope. Although, no. yeah, you should look at that, but that, that's like too <laughs> obvious. This this yeah. is something that you, you like get coaching for. What do you want to look at? Oh, boy. I want to look at... This is the first thing I look at, by the way, as a jungler, when I click on him. His trinket? Nope. No. It's it's more obvious than that. More obvious than that. I'm going to guess which jungle which jungle half item you started. Nope. I am out of ideas. Uh, which buffs does he have? Ah. Uh, because okay. let's say he has only blue buff. What does that tell you? That his red buff is probably up. Yep, his red buff is 100% up. Because, you know, how long does the buff last for? More than the amount of time has happened in the game at this point. Yes. <laughs> so that is definitely up. So if you see that he has, you know, what do we say, 8 CS? Uh, how, how can he have 8 CS and only blue buff at this point? What, what has he done? Uh, wolves instead of red buff. He did wolves instead of red buff, and then what else? 
Because this is one plus three is four plus three is seven. What else did he do? Scuttle. Scuttle. Okay, so what does that mean? He has not been topside. He has not been topside. What does that mean you should do right now? Take his topside. Why should you take his topside instead of ganking Riven through this ward that she just pushed? Uh, because I want my, I can tell Maokai just stay alive and it will set him back on his farm for his devourer. Exactly. Um, another thing to think about, um, if you gank that Riven, are you going to get a kill 100% of the time? No. Uh, are you going to get a kill 80% of the time? Probably not. Probably not. May maybe 55% of the time, 60% of the time, depending on how coordinated you are, right? Yep. So, so it's not a sure thing is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Now, if you see Zin Zhao sitting down here with only blue buff 8 CS... Uh, is this, this, and this a sure thing? It is. Uh, how much gold is just taking the, let's just say the, the big raptor and leaving the three, like you said? 50? Rounding about. It, a little bit more, but, but let's let's round up and say it's 100. Okay. Let, let's say taking this camp is another 100, right? And it's experience, too. You, you like experience on Kha'Zix, because the more levels you have, the more evolutions you have, right? Yep. And then the, the Krugs up here, you know, you just take the big one. Let, let's say that's uh, another 70 or something. Okay. So you got, like, 70 here, 70 here, 100 here. That's that's about 250 gold. Yep. Uh, did you get that 100% of the time while he's sitting here and maybe he walks back into the Fog of War? I did. Yeah. So is that a, a better play than trying to gank or a worse play? It is a better play. There you go, man. Congratulations. You, you, you are now doing diamond level calculations in your head. Yay. So the very first thing when he shows himself is I look at his buffs. Now let's say he has both. What's another thing you can look at? Uh... And this is nitty gritty, by the way. Like You won't need this to win in gold, but if you start doing it, you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it very much. He's got both buffs. I want to look at... I don't know. If you click him, uh, what happens? Uh, I see his buff timers. You see his buff timers. What do those tell you? Uh, how long till his buff falls off. How long till his buff falls off. But more importantly, there are two other things that those buff timers tell you. Um... And sorry, I'm, if you get it, you're, you're going to learn it better than if I tell you. Yeah, That's why I'm yeah, doing exactly. it. I'm going to say how long ago he cleared them, or how fast he cleared them. Uh, eh, kind of. Uh, <laughs> okay, now he has two buffs, right? Yeah. Would I want to know something about one buff versus the other buff? Well, which one he got first? Which one he got first? How would I see that? By seeing which one has a less time before it falls off. Uh, I, I think that's right. By seeing which one has the most time gone or less yeah. time left remaining. Okay, cool. Uh, what else does that tell me, that buff? Like, let's say blue buff is about to expire. There's like three seconds left on it. What does that tell me? And it is exactly three minutes in the game. Wait, 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 that makes no sense. It is exactly, let, let's say, four minutes into the game, because that makes more sense. And it's going to fall off. Um... Let's say five minutes, because that I'm trying to do something that could realistically happen. Five minutes, it, it just fell off right when you clicked on him. I don't know. It, it tells you exactly when his buff is going to be back up. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, how long did the buffs last? That's a question I should have learned three seasons ago. I'm gonna so guess check this out. Minutes. And remember, league freaking changes all the changes all the time. So yeah. it, it's just look this up. I have a sticky note on my second monitor that has all this shit, and every time they update it, um, I set it up. So according to the LOL wiki, the crest of insight lasts for a duration of exactly two minutes. So how long are the buff timers? Like when, when will it come back? Five minutes from when it was cleared. So if at five minutes his buff falls, falls off, when will it be back up? Eight minutes. Exactly eight minutes. You just add three minutes to it, right? Yep. So now if you notice that his red buff is almost gone, you know, it's like maybe three quarters of the way gone at five minutes, when is his red buff going to be back up? It's math that I don't know how to do. That's going to be 8.30? 8.30, exactly. You, you just learned how to do it. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay. So now what does that tell you that uh, you could do in the future? Ward uh, before, slightly before 8 minutes, 8.30. Yeah, so it, you're playing Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix kills people when they're alone. Maybe yeah. you want to cheese him at a buff. That's the thing you do. Another thing you do is just take his shit because he's a devourer jungler. Yeah. You know, Zed doesn't really like blue buff, but let's say he, uh, instead of a Zed, there's an Anivia mid, something that's really, really mana hungry. Is suddenly knowing when that blue buff is going to turn back on really, really important? Yes, because then they can stand in that brush and wait for the Anivia transfer and kill her. Yeah, and then you have blue buff. 
I'll have blue buff. Or again, like I'm more of a passive jungler, so like I play a lot of tanks that can't kill people, so I would just take the buff and then laugh at him in all chat or something. But yeah, I mean, you're playing Kajix, just kill him. Uh, against an Anivia, I don't know, that's risky because she's got that yeah. egg, right? It's a Zin Zhao, maybe they collapse on you when you're on cooldown, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, I mean, by all means, do that if you can. Maybe your Maokai teleports in on the ward you placed like a minute before it spawned, I don't know. But yeah, that's solid, man. So when you see him down here, there are two things you want to look at. The first one, does he have buffs? If yes, which one did he do first? And then what are the timers? And the way I do it, um, I'll just type in chat, you know, something that I can do the math later on because I am by no means Rain Man. And that add three minutes to when the buff expires bullshit hurts my brain personally. <laughs> so what I'll do is be like uh, blue buff three quarters, red buff, uh, you know, half or something like that. And if you have timestamps turned on in your league client, that means when you're like recalling in a bush or mindlessly farming a camp, you can just do the math on your own pace. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and, and as you practice that, you'll get better. And then that tells you, you know, sometime in the next four minutes or whatever, set up a play there. You know, if it's that Anivia that really wants blue buff, just go murder her when she's taking it, something like that. But you get that just by clicking on the enemy jungler when he's derping around in that bush and seeing, oh, thank you for the free information. I'm now going to take that from you. Yeah. Okay, so so that's nitty gritty bullshit, but it helps you plan out the next what should I do kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. Make sense? Exactly. Okay. So counting the creeps is next level bullshit, but I mean do that because against a devour jungler his jungle is what he wants to focus on he wants to pve for the entire first 20 minutes of the game until he gets sated yeah so at any time if you notice oh he's a dumb shit and he's down here and his entire red jungle's up just go take that shit maybe even on red i leave one little guy up just to be an extra dick because that has a five minute respawn timer instead of a minute 40 respawn timer i mean you're the jungler, man. You decide what you want to do. Personally, I would take it down so I would have that timer yeah, for me and I could set a trap for him and go murder him, but, you know, yeah. your call. Yep. Okay, so does that kind of make sense? Also, a reason you'd want to do that, again, Riven just put that ward here. So if you go do that, you know, kill, 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 suddenly that ward's gone, you know, and you can do whatever you want. Because yeah. maybe she put it in try because she's dumb. I don't know. Okay, makes sense? <laughs> yes, it does. All right, so, so we're already talking about, okay, what should I do early game? And that kind of informs what you do mid to late game. Because knowing that, hey, he's probably going to be on his blue buff when it spawns again. Now that's like 8 to 12 minutes into the next part of the game. Oh, shit, guys, Elite Riders here. Give him a follow if you like watching a good streamer that's better than me. Sorry, side, side thing. Not talking to you. Talking to Elite okay. Rider. Yeah, I got your stream on as well. I'm watching, so. Okay. I see, I see the chats pop up. Yep, from time to time. Try not to be too rude and ignore you. <laughs> okay, but uh, going back to what you were talking about, I had notes somewhere. Yeah, there we go. I want to make sure I'm not ignoring everything because we're already talking about decision-making and what I need to do, but right place at the right time. That was your, your main thing, right? Yep. So this is telling you how to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. So um, let's focus on this one, not being in the wrong place at the wrong time, okay? So yeah. let's say that you, you clicked on Xin Zhao and you saw that he had the 8 CS and only blue buff and you're still up here somewhere, right? Yeah. What would be the wrong thing to do? Uh, run all the way to counter gank. Um, well, here, let me do this. Yeah, run all the way to counter gank is just so blatantly dumb, I'd assume I you'd never do it. <laughs> I threw that one out there. <laughs> but uh, what's, uh, what's something maybe a more passive jungler, somebody that's learning the game, that maybe they don't know that 8 CS means I should go in here and do, and your Maokai just told you Riven warded top. What, what would be a bad thing to do? Go back and farm my own jungle? Go back and farm your own jungle. That would be a mistake. So, like, being here, here, and here tells you uh, will put you in the right place at the right time. Uh, going back to farm, it's not bad, but it's not good. It's neutral. Yeah. So think of it that way. Yeah. Um, so another thing. Um, let's go back to your to the example we just said. He started bot. He had blue buff. He had 8 CS, which means he did this half of the map and not this half of the map. Two minutes into the future, what's probably going to happen after he fails his gank bot? Because you saw him on that ward. You told your team to place. I just zoned out. Reiterate that. Reiterate okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so right now... You just took his shit. He tried a gank bot. It didn't work. Blitzcrank is laughing at him. He's going back up here. He has nothing to farm. He's probably going to recall and then walk this way, right? Mm -hmm. What should you be doing after that? Because let's say he tried a failed gank bot. You took his shit. Killed Riven. W what are you doing now? Uh, recall. 
call by and going to his bottom side jungle. Yes! Yes! Okay, now we get it. Because what's he going to do? He's going to come up here and be like, Okay, it's time to get my red buff. Oh, no! It is so sad. And you left like a creep at each one, right? Yep. So he does have to go by and clear each one. What are you doing over here in the meantime? Because it's two minutes later. Uh, clearing his gromp and one big wolf. Gromp and one big wolf. Why one big wolf and not two? Just because new people are watching the stream. Because he's a single target based champion, so it takes him more time to clear that. Yep, and we're talking about the enemy jungler guys is a Zin Zhao. Uh, our friend here is playing Kajik. So we're just theory crafting what he should do. Uh, what else should you do while you're in here? I, I guess what jungle item did you buy? Uh, the blue one. Oh, the blue one. Why? I like the blue one. That 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 is a good reason sometimes, but uh, <laughs> give me a better reason. Uh, because it's uh, easier to chase, catch up to them with a slow, and it's more damage. So, um, so hear me out. Just in this specific example, are you going to be able to catch anyone on the enemy team because you have blue smite over, like, any other smite? Let, let me let me phrase this a different way. Does Riven have dashes and stuns? Yes, Riven and Zed both do. Does Zed have a dash? Yes. Does Sivir have both a spell shield and an ultimate that lets her run way faster than you? Yes. Does Alistar... Are you you're going to be able to catch him when he headbutts you back? Uh, no. No. Okay, Zin Zhao, even if you catch him, is he going to knock you up or, like, jump to a creep over a wall or something? I don't know. You, maybe you can catch Zin Zhao. Yeah. So, so let's say one out of four champions your blue smite might work against. Mm -hmm. And do you want to fight Zin Zhao 1v1? Not until level 6. Not until level 6. So by the time you're level 6, will you be probably team fighting, or will it still be laning phase and you're 1v1? Uh, laning phase 1v1. So, so how long will that go on for? Roughly 10 minutes, just under 10 minutes. Oh, damn. Gold is a lot different than diamond. Okay, so maybe I can see the blue smite then, if you're telling me that. Oh, yeah. It's, it, they, there's, no, there's no grouping. Okay, there's no grouping. Th that's amazing, then. Okay, take the blue smite. Ignore me. Um, I, I could see arguments for the red smite, because Zin is kind of an assassin type person that yeah. will have damage. Zed yeah. is an assassin type person. Ribbon will have a big burst of damage, so red yeah. smite could exhaust him. But also, um, the warding yeah, jungle the item is so good. Because of how it's gold, I would take smite, but obviously, I, I do know the power that the warding trinket does have. Okay. But currently, I'm gold, so it's mostly moot okay I'm because throwing. you you just said that sentence i'm fine with it okay so extra damage because it's gold and there are bad players and you want resets that is completely a respectable answer but if it wasn't gold and you wanted to be better you take this you take this and what do you do because you know his blue buff is going to be up in like the next two minutes you drop a ward you drop a ward how many wards one two where do you put them you put one in the three-way path above the blue it's so like here uh, to the right. To the right? Like here? Yeah. And okay, cool. Sec my second guess was going to be the other one. But yes, those two spots. Have you bought a pink ward yet? Uh, hopefully. Okay, where are you going to put it? Oh, that's a good question. Let me ask you a better question. Are, are you going to kill the enemy team or just passively farm? I'm going to kill the enemy team. So what half of the map do you want to put your pink ward on? This half or this half? Their half. Their half. Uh, where are the two bushes it only makes sense to put pink wards if you're jungling? Uh, Here, tell me, let's let's play uh, uh, hot and cold. Tell tell me if I'm getting hotter or colder. Cold, hot. Cold. Yeah, that's a good one. Yep. What about this one? That's also a good one. No, that's a horrible no, one. Not a good one actually. Why is this a horrible one? Uh, because it's very clearable. You can't stop it. It's very. They find it immediately. They're gonna walk through that bush every single time they clear that half of the map. That, that's yeah, exactly. And they have the chicken smite, which reveals wards. Uh, what about this bush? Is that a good one? The one on top of their red buff, to the right of that. This one right here? Yeah. Where, where do you want to put it? Do you want to put it, like, here? Top, uh, topmost. Topmost? Like, like up here? Middle top. Here? Yep. Outermost, yep. I disagree. You, you want to put it here, and let me okay. tell you why. If you put it here, can you see them clearing their red buff? You can't. If you put it here, can you see them clearing their red buff? You can. Yes. This ward will stay up for, like, 20 minutes if you put it. Yeah, nobody ever clears that red. So, first back... Upgrade your jungle item so you get the extra damage, so you can get your resets on the bad gold players. Buy a pink ward, you know, buy however many long swords you can afford. But if he's going to be on this side of the map, you're probably on this side. You're countering his jungle. You're putting a pink ward here. You're trying to gank bot again. Mm -hmm. And that's because you know he's up here, and you know bot lane probably burned summoners in the last five minutes because you just ganked them, and you're timing those in chat.
Yeah. So already we're at like the 10 to 20 minute mark and you're staying a few steps ahead of the enemy jungler. Do you see how this is kind of working? Yes. Okay, cool. So, so going back to, and again, interrupt me if you have questions or this doesn't make sense or there's different things to do. But already knowing that you need to be in the right place at the right time to like stop these power spike things that we talked about. One of them was Zen farming up his Sated Devourer. Already this is opening up a whole bunch of things. Now, if, if you didn't want to, you know, counter his jungle and put a pink ward deep, which I think is the best thing to do, what's another thing you can do as Kajix? Uh, as opposed to, sorry, what was that? Zone that again. Yeah, yeah, no worries. As opposed to doing uh, what we just said you should do, which is take his big wolf, take his gromp, ward up his jungle. Uh, what's another thing you could do? Uh, at what point in the game? Right now. Like, let's say um, uh, Zin is top. He's clearing all the countered shit you just left. It's like maybe 10 minutes into the game or whatever, 8 to 10. And you were going to walk up here to clear his wolf and his gromp. But uh, instead, you didn't. What could you do instead? What level am I? Uh, I don't know. However level you are up here, like almost 6, let's say. Uh, if I'm 6, I would solo drag. Cool. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. If bot lane's not gankable, mid, it isn't gankable. Yeah, just solo dragon, because you know he's on this side of the map. Yeah. Uh, what's another thing you should be thinking about, just looking at who's on their team, who's on your team? Um, enemy levels. Enemy levels. Uh, which enemy in particular? Zed. Why? Because he's got a very strong level 6 power spike. Yeah, so what's he going to do at level 6? Because it's gold and pe people don't think. All in. He's going to all in. Who? Uh, whoever you can, but probably LeBlanc. Probably LeBlanc, right? So what's another thing you can do if you're not soloing Dragon? Uh, get ready for him to all in and catch him. Yep, so what, stand right here? Just wait for it? Yeah. Uh, which is a better decision? And we have three of them right now. Countering Zen's jungle, soloing Dragon, or waiting for the, the counter engage here? And why? I would say countering Zen's jungle because that... It's me gold while setting Zin farther behind, and it's more guaranteed. Uh, I agree, yeah. Okay, between the dragon and, and setting up for this counter gank mid, what's the better one? Getting the dragon because that's five stacks on a devourer if he gets it, plus it's one of their stronger win conditions. I agree. Um, at the same time, if it's gold and the enemy team is already raging at their jungler in all chat, which one is the better one? Killing Zed because yeah. they want him to gank. But uh, if they aren't doing that and you have no visible sign that the enemy team is, like, salty, um, I think clearing these camps, maybe soloing Dragon if you see Zin try to, like, gank your Maokai top or something. You know, yeah. just do that. But exactly what you said, in that order, this is smarter than this. Because the Dragon is also bait. Like, if Zin just starts doing it, he's going to be at, like, a third health and you just jump in and one-shot him, right? Yep. Yeah. But realize that Probably what's going to happen is Zed is going to all in this LeBlanc. Maybe Zen is running this way. So if you were to do this, just because he has nothing to farm, he's looking for something. Maokai is probably playing smart because, you know, it's up against a ribbon and he doesn't want to push out too far. Like, you got to be ready for something like this to happen because Zed is definitely going to all in at level 6. And he is going to be, like, dancing between this area because he has nothing to farm. So another thing to worry about, maybe he does Rift Herald, but eh, whatever. If he does that, you just take Dragon. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think you go through here, you take these two camps, get some wards, and then if you, like, hear Rift Herald has just been defeated, solo dragon. If bot is gankable, kill bot first. But, yeah. I mean, so now let's say... I don't know. Like, th this is how I would play. And then from here, I would kind of play out the map and figure out, okay, what do we do now? Kind of thing. Because at this point, Alistar is starting to hit six, so it's going to be harder to gank bot lane. Sivir will have her ult to run away. Spell Shield will be up more often. Zed will have his ult up every few minutes, like one or two, right? A minute and a half, yeah. Yeah, so at, let's talk about this. What should we do at this point? Because you, you've won the early game if you've done all this shit, right? But now it's like now it's like that 10, 15 minute phase and, you know, laning phase is, is starting to end. Uh, where should you be exerting pressure, I guess, is my question. In their jungle. In their jungle, why? Because Kha'Zix is a dueler and he has a huge power spike. He has a huge power spike, and you've been shitting on the enemy jungler, right? So is he strong or weak? Very weak. Very weak. Um, what do you have to worry about? Like, like where are you going to fight, first of all? Uh, in their jungle, around their buffs? Around their buffs, sure, 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 because you have the timers, because we talked about how you can get to that. But here, pick one. Tell me when and where you're going to fight. Uh, I'm going to fight at their blue buff. At their blue buff, cool. All right, where are you going to be? And do you have wards or anything? 
Uh, I should hopefully have that pink ward. Okay, that pink ward is here. What other wards do you have? Uh, no is a fine answer, too. I'm just asking. Just say probably expired. Okay, that probably expired. On that side. If anything, it would be on the top half or warding for bot lane or something. Okay, so this is you. You're going to be right here. Uh, jungler's coming down to do his blue buff. Where's bot lane? Like, are they pushed up? Are they at their tower? What's going on? They are in the middle, equal fighting. In the middle, equal fighting. Okay, cool. Uh, what about Riven? Do, does, is there anything about Riven you need to worry about if you're going to do this? Uh, teleport. Yeah, does she have teleport? She does not. Okay, she does not. That's weird, but okay. Um, <laughs> is, is there anything else you need to worry about? Let's say she doesn't have teleport. Uh, anything from Riven or anything in general? A anything from Riven. I'm going to keep asking because, there, yes, there are more things in general you should worry about. What else? Is, is she in lane or is she not in lane? Yeah, is, is she, if she's missing, should you do this? <laughs> yeah. Why? Oh, sorry, I was, I was confirming the question. Okay, yeah, L let's say she's missing. Does it make sense to just fight the enemy jungler one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, no. Uh, I think the answer is it depends. Okay. And what does it depend on? On um, how top lane is going. How top lane is going, sure. Like, like if she's really far ahead, that's different than, than if she's really far behind. But there's something else that's a lot easier that has to do with your duo that you can look at if you hit tab. <laughs> is he winning? Well, is he winning? Yeah, but but let's say it's even because he's a Maokai and he's not going to have as much damage. No, no, his as his teleport up. His teleport is up because you have a you're literally standing on a thing he can teleport to, correct? Yes. So now let's say his teleport is down and Riven is missing. Should you pick this fight? Probably not. Probably not. But let's say his teleport is up and Riven is missing. Can you pick this fight? Yes. Why? Because he can reduce the damage I take. Because he can teleport in if oh. she just magically appears because she was farming wolves for some godforsaken reason. Yeah. Okay, that's that's all I was looking for, but that's something gotcha. you want to be thinking about. Because yeah. what, what's another thing that can happen? Let's say like you start fighting this guy, you know, Riven was running here, but she's like, oh, fuck, we're going to fight. What else should you be worried about? Where's Zed? Where's Zed, and what else about Zed should you be tracking? Uh, his ultimate and what? summoners. His ultimate and summoners. So does he have Ignite up? He does. Okay, he does. Is his ultimate up? Did he just use it on LeBlanc and force her out of lane? You know, things like that, right? Yep. So be thinking about that, because... In all honesty, I would not be fighting around on this blue buff unless I was sure I could one-shot this guy. Yeah. So that's like a judgment call on you. If you tab and see that he's like at half health and has like he hasn't even finished his jungle item yet, then by all means, go in there and murder him. But if I don't know where Riven is, if she has teleport, she doesn't in this case. But if she does, if Zed is up with his ultimate, you know, you you could throw a perfectly won game by doing this. Yeah. Um, in all honesty, at this point in the game... I wouldn't go for aggressive bullshit like this. Okay. And and what's the reason for that? Can you tell me? Um, because I can pressure other objectives to get guaranteed gold. Uh, what are your guaranteed win conditions here? Uh, Dragon and Maokai. Okay, so what does Maokai need to do to get strong? Do, does he need to be teleporting in to save your ass? No, he needs to be staying in lane and farming. He needs to be staying in lane and farming. So if Riven's coming down here to chase you through the jungle, is that good or bad? It's good because then he can farm on his own. He's well, it's, him it's him. good unless you get caught. It, yeah. Okay, but, but you see the difference, right? Yes. So if you cannot get caught and die and give up a dragon, that's amazing. Because if, if, if you start fighting, he's going to teleport in because he's a good teammate. And suddenly he's not getting as much gold. Suddenly he's not getting that armor. Suddenly this win condition is shit. Yeah. Uh, what's another thing you should be doing instead of maybe fighting the Zen at his blue buff? Um... Is, is the dragon dead or alive? I don't know. Let's say it's up. If it's up, I should just take. I just, should just take I the should freaking secure dragon. Vision to make sure they're not collapsing on me, or see if it's so I can see if they're collapsing on me, and then just take it. So you're you're Kajik's one trick. What's something you could do? Maybe you don't put this pink ward here. What can you do instead? Pink the dragon. Pink the dragon. Uh, uh, one of my favorite things to do on Kajix, Uh I do this on Jax too. But can he jump over walls? He can. So if you put a a ward like here. And there's aren't any wards. What's a trick you can do? Jump behind the wall and they can't see me. And they can't see you at all. And you just sit in the pit, take the dragon, and then when you're dead, is your jump back up or is it down? When I when dragon is dead, you mean? Yeah. Let, let's say you jump over. How long does it take for you to take dragon? Is it like a minute? Uh, it'll be it'll be back up by the time I kill it. It'll be back up by the time you kill it. Now, if you do this, is that better for your win conditions than fighting in the enemy jungle? Yes. 
Yep, I, I'm just I'm just asking questions. I'm not yeah, saying they're I was, hard. I was I was thinking like maybe scenario, but yes, typically, generally yes. Yeah. So I mean, in you could do this. You can 100% do this. But you're against a Zed. He's very slippery. He could probably kill you one v one, even if you're ahead. Like I don't know how good you are on Kajix. I don't know how good he is on Zed. He's kind of a mechanical, and this is gold. But but why risk it? You know, when that's not your win condition. Win condition is control dragons, keep Zin Zhao weak. If he gets a blue buff and you get a dragon, is that a one trade or a loss trade? That is a one trade for me. Exactly. So I mean. Think about that. Think think back to the win conditions. Don't be blinded. Okay. So dragon's off the board. What what else could you be doing right now? Like let's say dragon is gone. You like you just killed this. Your pink ward's in here. Zin just cleared his his blue buff and he's walking this way. What else could you be thinking now? Um, checking the lanes for positioning. Checking the lanes for positioning. You know Zed's probably going to be trying to one shot the LeBlanc. Hopefully she has her zonias by now. If she doesn't, if she's building like a Bizzle scepter into Zed, what could you be doing? <laughs> Yelling at her? Yelling at her, yes. Be like, hey, uh, hey, LeBlanc, Zed does AD damage. You might want to try, try Zonia's. Like, like that is fine as long as you do it polite. Yeah. Like, yelling, don't call, don't call her a freaking moron. Yelling head being polite out loud. Exactly, exactly. So, so maybe do that. So, if she's gonna have trouble, maybe you start doing that counter gank thing because that'll actually you'll actually be at the point where you can just kill a Zed if he jumps in and is on cooldown now. Yeah. But another thing is maybe you start helping this Maokai out and maybe you guys get a Rift Herald together and give it to him. Or you can take it and just do all the damage. Whatever you want to do. It's really your call. Yeah. But if you give it to Maokai, maybe you start forcing down towers. Um, but yeah, at this point in the game, like you've controlled the dragon. You've set the enemy jungler behind. You're probably looking to team fight if you guys are actually this far ahead. Because if, if they have fallen behind, then yeah, force a team fight. You have that Maokai who's going to start getting strong. You might as well like start making things happen, right? Start taking towers. Push your advantage. But um, but yeah, I would take the dragon, I would take the Rift Herald, and I would like use your duo and push. And at this point, like the game should just be take towers and that you're stronger than them and just keep doing that. Yeah. N nothing really crazy. All right, do you have questions? Is this helpful? I, I want to make sure I'm not missing stuff too. I, I think we've kind of gone over how how you know to be in the right place at the right time. It's all those little tells the enemy gives you, like those buffs and things, right? Yeah. Uh, similar place to Alsaka. Do you want to go over that now, or do you have more questions about this? Uh, let's, um, because we had like 20 minutes left. I want to make yeah. sure I get all this stuff. Yeah. How, how about just a, a quick tidbit, making sure I'm aware I have, you know, I can't focus for shit. So I, I tunnel hot. How do I avoid tunneling and how do I, how do I increase awareness? Make sure I'm checking the things that I need to be checking and not just, ah, like, up. um, Okay, there are a couple of drills you can do. Like, when you say tunnel, do you not look at the map? Uh, depends on the game. But for the most part, no, I don't look at the map as often as I should. Okay, uh, one thing you can do... Uh, you, you have a mobile phone. Is it like a smartphone? Yes. Uh, there are apps that every, you know, X number of seconds, they will just make a sound. Like a beep! Metro yeah, metronome. A beep! Yeah. Metronome, exactly. Get, get a metronome app. And every time that beep happens look at the minimap okay uh that is the easiest way to do that and then what you do is you space the beeps out or after like a week of doing that you'll just naturally look at it yeah so, so that's one very simple thing you can do another simple thing you can do is play a champion like shin in the jungle maybe on a smurf or another account because it's yeah. not very good mm -hmm. but the reason you want to do that is his kit is super simple and so that means you don't have to focus on mechanics while you're farming and you're constantly looking for teammates to ult and what that teaches you to do is look at the minimap because you literally have nothing else to do and you're just worthlessly uh, AFK farming until like a gank happens and you have to alt to counter gank. Um, you can do the same kind of thing with Nocturne if you want to be less bored. Yeah. So uh, pick champions of global ultimates, practice them. Even if it's just in normals, that'll teach you to have more awareness too because every time you don't have awareness, it'll be a big smack in the face because your teammates will yell at you. Yeah. And that'll kind of condition your brain to look more often. The metronome yeah. thing helps a little bit more though. Okay. So that's one thing. Um, another thing you can do, like if you're actually consistently dynamically queuing with people and the same people, be like, hey, I'm about to fight this guy. Tell me if anybody's coming. Okay. And just yell it. Like Maokai is not a mechanical champion. So if your guy is like a Maokai only main, like he can look at the mini map for you and be like, oh, watch out. Zed's coming from the top. Run. By he can shot call for you is what I'm saying. 
So that's something that a lot of people do. Like, I do that whenever I, like, queue with people. That way you can cheat and just not have to be better at the game. You can have your team help you because it's a team game. Kind of makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the easy ones I would would do. Uh, other ways, just, just play simpler champions. Like, Kajix isn't that crazy, but you still have to kind of pay attention early, otherwise the camps will kill you, yeah. depending on your runes and masteries. But if you play something that's just mindless, like a Warwick or a Nunu, where there's no way in hell you can die, like, that'll help you, like, learn, watch the map. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, do you want to look at similar champs to Ka real quick before the... Cool. And when you say similar, do you mean build-wise, or do you mean... Just play style wise or what? Play style wise, I let's do alphabetical. I like I like especially I like jumping. Okay, so you know, resets, the, jumping, being resets, able to... jumping. You know, fizz is the one I play is is the my my mid one trick. Um, Actually, if you're good at fizz, pick up fizz. You, you can jungle them. You can build them tank and be super annoying, like CDR tank. Uh, you can build them damage and be super annoying, but it's doable. Okay. Um, so pick up Fizz in the jungle. I can... Who's the, the good Fizz guy? Uh, Fish, a good Kindred one trick to watch, because I wanted to watch them, because Kindred's one of the champions I want to get better at. So let me see if I can find that, and I'll send you a message afterwards. Uh, shoot me a Twitch message if I forget. Uh, but yeah, something like that would be good to watch, just to learn Fizz tricks, because there's a bunch of really fancy stuff you can do on him. Like, my favorite thing on Fizz is to use your E to jump over the wall, smite steal a dragon, and then jump back with the other half of your E... Oh my god, people get so mad. It is so funny. <laughs> Fate Falls. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Fishing for Earth is one of his smurfs. Hey, what's up, pal? Good to see you, man. So here, I'll, I'll throw it in Skype chat, too, just for you. Okay. Do I know a good player of Kindred Jungle? Um, Someone asked me that a while ago. Let me see if I can find them. Yeah, because I did find a, a good Kindred one trick to watch, because I wanted to watch them, because Kindred's one of the champions I want to get better at. So let me see if I can find that, and I'll send you a message afterwards. Uh, shoot me a Twitch message if I forget. Uh, but yeah, something like that would be good to watch, just to learn Fizz tricks, because there's a bunch of really fancy stuff you can do on him. Like, my favorite thing on Fizz is to use your E to jump over the wall, smite steal a dragon, and then jump back with the other half of your E. Oh my god, people get so mad, it is so funny. <laughs> but but there's, like, some mechanical stuff you can do with him. Are, are you good with his shark? Um, on and off, depends on the game, honestly. Uh, I'm, if it I'm depends on the something. game, that means you're bad with it, the shark, let yeah. me put it that way. Um, I'm not terrible, but I have messed them up on occasion. Uh, one thing I want you to do, I want you to do this. This is homework number two. First homework was watch streamers that play different jungle styles so you can yeah. get an idea of clear speeds uh, and jungle paths. Quick sidetrack. Um, yeah. What about, uh, you mentioned a cow set for Sated. Do you have any other recommendations? I didn't quite catch any. Yeah, 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 sure. How about this? I'll send you a, a message afterwards because I want to make sure okay. the people I recommend still stream. Yeah. Because there's a few washed-up LCS players that are very good at specific champions, but they might stream once a month versus every day like others that aren't as good. Yeah. So so let me just do that. But yes, I'll give you some recommendations. And the chat is already throwing stuff out there. Gotcha. But um, what else were we saying? Fuck. God, you've sidetracked me now. Uh, sharking. <laughs> sharking. Okay, Um, what I want you to do, this is homework number two. Only do this for a half hour because it'll probably be really boring. But what I want you to do is go into a custom game. By yourself, I want you to get 45% CDR uh, from items or whatever. So that's probably get like a sheen, get like a glacial shroud, maybe get 10% uh, from your runes and masteries, just flat, and then get like a Kindle gym. Just 45% CDR. I want you to power farm to level 6, and I want you to go by Dragon Pit and practice hitting a max range uh, Fizz Alt, your shark, on the Scuttle Crab. It sounds just horrible, but if you get that 45% CDR, yeah. it'll be a sub one minute cooldown, and you can stop whenever you hit three max range alts on it in a row. Okay. Okay. But from, if you're... from from where am I standing again? In uh, the back pit. Uh, you know what? Wherever you want. Uh, the range on that shark is ginormous if yeah. you know how to do it correctly. Yeah. So what I want you to do is be able to hit it from max range wherever. Maybe it's the pixel bush or something when it's walking towards you. You know, just make sure you can land three in a row. If you can do that, you can stop. Yep. But while, do that. While I'm fighting it or while I'm... No, not while you're fighting it. Like, I want you hiding in a bush. It's walking. I want you to be able to land it from max range. And max gotcha. range is like a quarter screen. It's pretty damn big. Yeah. 
But uh, I want you to do that. If you're going to play Fizz jungle, you got to be able to do that. Otherwise, it's it's just play better champions. Because Fizz has problems clearing early. So if you're not a god, like once you hit your power spike, which is level 6 on him, it's just not even worth playing because you're not going to climb. Yeah. Okay, makes sense? Yep. All right, other champions. Let's talk about it. You mentioned like not liking Rengar. Is there a reason why? Uh, it's not that I don't like him. I just fucking... I'm so bad, and, you know, it, okay. it's, it's someone I can get to like, because that is my playstyle. He's similar to Kha'Zix. He's got that jump and just blow up assassin play playstyle. I just have to practice his mechanics and everything a lot. Uh, get Rengar. Look up old Ryan Choi videos. Here. I will type this here so you guys can just see. I don't think he plays anymore. I haven't seen him in a while, but Ryan Choi used to be the, the best Rengar in the world. He he made up, like, the, the one-shot combo that people do. Yeah. Uh, very good player. Find his old videos, find his old guides, and like you'll you'll just see. Because a lot of the mechanics are the same, even if the balance numbers are different. Yeah. But he's a good player to look at. Um, you'll probably really like Lee Sin, actually. And before I tell you to play Lee Sin, what's your ping? 25. 25. You can play Lee Sin. Play Lee Sin. <laughs> if your, your ping is over 60, don't play Lee Sin. Yeah. Uh, so pick up Lee Sen, do that. Uh, Pantheon might be a good one. He's a little bit simpler, but Global Ultimate will help with your awareness. He can kill people. You can build him straight damage. You can build him tank, and he's still good. Okay. And you can tower dive with him, which is something that Kha'Zix and Rengar can't do as effectively. Yeah. So do that. And Powell's saying there's so many Rengar mains. Yeah, but just because you're a Rengar main doesn't mean you know what the F you're doing, right, Powell? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to give him, like, someone good to watch so he can get the mechanics down. Like, like um... The reason I say it, like, I have played a lot of Sejuani games, right? She's my favorite champion, but I was watching uh, some challenger guy play Sejuani, and he just built her wrong. He leveled her abilities wrong. He only won the game that was in this YouTube thing for, like, challenger one-trick ponies because his team carried him. And I'm like, you don't want to be learning that champion from that shit. Um, so going back to it, uh, Nocturne. You, you should pick up Nocturne. You'll like him. Yeah, I, I just started playing a couple games. They didn't, uh, didn't go well because I tried to dodge the first one because they didn't switch champions. And then I showed up six minutes later. I went eight and one, but then we kind of blew it. So okay, but yeah, I mean, he's someone I'm picking up. Any champion you're gonna have to play at least twenty times to get the hang of. Nocturne's yeah. easier mechanically. Mm -hmm. He's one of those champions that has that global ultimate and is clear as like, hey, throw Q the right way and then just sit there auto attacking. You know, it, it's not rocket science, but that'll let you watch the map easier. So him and Pantheon will help you be a better player from yeah. a map awareness standpoint. Nidalee might be good, but there are nerfs coming to her, so I would wait yeah, a match. Yeah, she's nerfed, plus I'm dark shit with her, too. Yeah, she, she's very mechanical, too. So if you're having trouble watching the map with easier champions, like, I would wait to yeah. learn her. Yeah. But but she can has jumps. She is impossible to kill. She can jump over walls. She'd be good if you need some range and don't want to just jump into, a like, an Amumu comp or something that wants to hug you. Yeah. Who else would be good? Uh, is that enough champions, by the way? Because most people only pick four or five and do that. Yeah, my friend recommended Shaco, which... It, Shaco, there's like an unspoken uh, rule about Shaco, and it's if a Shaco is in your game, you're going to lose. Yeah. Because if he's on the other team, he's a god. If he's on your team, he, like he's one of those champions that you need like a thousand games to get really, really good at because he's so mechanical. Yeah, yeah that was the thing. Was, it, you know, I could practice him. And he's got a similar play style, but... He's he's uh, he he goes poof really easily and that's yeah and here's the thing once you you climb to a certain point the player base gets smarter and like Shaco is countered by game knowledge so like yeah. you'll you'll get to a point where you're doing a gank and they just drop a pink ward and then you're dead you know like like any champion that gets that is squishy and gets countered by like a 75 gold item or a hundred gold item you know eh, like maybe learn somebody else yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for like what I would learn. There are other yeah. like I used to play Wukong jungle a ton, but he has so much trouble killing people. Like he's yeah, more of like a utility like, setup champion. Yeah. You can kill people. Like like don't yell at me, stream. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh and yeah, and Powell's saying like like hey, you also need to be careful with Nocturne Q. So like when you're farming, you don't throw the Q over the wall so the enemy yeah. team sees it. Like there's all a bunch of little things like that you'll pick it's up. Like with the Vi when you see her punch the raptor. Yeah, exactly. That's suspicious. Vi might be good to learn, but but like I don't know. I I've been trying to play her a few times in normals, and it feels like you just are so squishy, even if you get like the shield items now. Like yeah, she's she's up and down. Um, you know, it depends on the item shifts. Like you probably want to. You can build her tank too, but they're just better champions to play that do the yeah. same thing. Yep. 
So, so maybe you'd want to learn her if you're running into a bunch of protected Kogma comps, because if you blow up the Kogma, you win the fight, but eh. I, you could do the same thing with Kha'Zix and just kill everybody, so I don't yeah, know. Just, just blow up the Kha'Zix. Yeah. Uh, Kogma, rather. Or, yeah, you know you know what I mean, though. Yeah. But okay, does, does that kind of help you for similar play styles to Ka? Yeah. I would definitely recommend those. If you need players to watch, let me know, and I'll hunt them down for you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and Lights is talking about Wukong. He might be able to give you Wukong tips. I'm probably saying wrong things, but he got to Diamond playing, like, top jungle Wukong, I think. Super Metroid goes straight damage on Vi Nocturne. Yeah, but you have to really know your shit if you're going to do that, because if you jump in at the wrong moment, uh, straight damage gets blown up and countered by CC. But, Powell, you're right. You can do that. Like, Faker, he doesn't take defensive runes because you can't hit him with an ability. <laughs> so he doesn't need them. <laughs> so it all depends on how good you are and what play style you have. Sorry, talking to my stream more than oh, you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, other question you had, identifying power spikes. How do I see other power spikes? How do I avoid dumb deaths? Well, a lot of that is just champion knowledge, right? And a lot of that is, yeah. um, like, let's say you just lost a game to a champion. You have no idea about their power spikes, and you jumped in and made a, a bad thing, right? A bad decision. Um, what I would recommend is either play that champion five times in, like, a, a cooper's AI game or a normal game doing the exact same build that guy did and just trying to push yourself, like trying to do dumb shit. And then you'll learn very quickly the limits of that champion. If you don't have time for that, Google, you know, that champion one trick pony Twitch and then just watch that for like an hour and then you'll figure out when he's strong. You could probably ask the streamer like when his power spikes are because, you know, he'll have like 12 viewers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So that's another way. All right, makes sense? Makes sense. All right, we have four minutes left. Is there anything else you would like to talk about? Uh, is there anything else I would like to talk about? And if you want to do another session where we actually watch a video and then I can be like, oh, why did you do this instead of this? Or, hey, yeah. why are you building that instead of this? Or, oh, that was interesting. Why did you make this decision? Yeah, I will uh, definitely make another session. This is a lot of help. Um, okay, cool, man. We'll get a video ready for you. And I will record. And... Yeah. There might be... If it's with my duo buddy, you might hear conversations and laughter. But Yeah, that's fine, though. In all honesty, if you have that video that, where you can see your cursor and stuff, and I can see what you're actually clicking and doing versus like just a replay, that's better. Yeah. Because then I can actually hear your thought process. I can see where your mouse is. I can see if you're... Like, uh, like one very simple thing that will help you be a better player, do you still click the abilities to level them up? Uh, no, I would control hotkey. Okay, cool, cool. You have the, the hotkey. But some people don't do that. And then when you're in the middle of the fight and you, you accidentally evolve Kajix, you know you know why. Yeah. But okay, you do that too. So fine, fine, fine. All right. All right, cool. Man. But yeah, let's schedule another session. Um, Shoot me a message if you want a copy of this video. Otherwise, it, the whole stream will be up for like a month or so before it gets deleted automatically. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Sounds good. All right, and nice meeting you. Good luck in solo queue. Just remember, think about all the shit we talked about. Like, when the game is loading, what are what are our win conditions? What are their win conditions? What do I need to do to make sure they don't win? Yeah. And then do uh, that. <laughs> quick, quick, I guess, quick, uh, just if, if we can do a prank, quick rundown. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've identified the win conditions. Here's XYZ is happening. And it all turns on its head. Shit, shit's hitting the fan. And they're 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 pressing their win conditions, and we don't have a str we don't have a strong way of stopping their win conditions. How do I identify new win conditions, or what I should be doing if it's not going according to plan? Gotcha. First and foremost, deep breath, <laughs> focus. If they're doing some, usually what happens, especially in gold, remember, because you're not playing against the top one percent of the player base or anything. You're not playing against LCS players. Is they are going to throw. So if they are shitting on you, keep farming, be patient, try to keep the game as even as possible. Even if like the enemy jungler is like getting kill, 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 because your teammates are bad. Keep farming, get kills when you can, don't die, like don't do dumb shit that's low probability, and wait for them to make a mistake. Because especially if they're winning, they're going to get greedy, they're going to tower dive when they shouldn't, and you're going to be there to reset, 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 and then, you know, do whatever you want. Okay. So just be patient, deep breath. If your team is fighting, you know, tell a knock knock joke every time they fight. That's that's what I like doing. <laughs> the dumber the better. Laffy taffy or dad jokes, you know, whatever. 
<laughs> my, my favorite is usually like when people are fighting, I'm like, girls, girls, you're both pretty, you know, or just something stupid. Yeah. But well, every time... Man around and none of us have seen the movie. Yep, yep, yep. Like, that's perfect. But just keep doing that until your team shuts the fuck up and plays the game and then just wait for them to make a mistake. Gotcha. Because, like, even though you're playing Kajix, like, it's going to be hard to kill people when they're a thousand gold ahead of you. Yeah. So what you need to do is wait for them to be in a position, maybe like the enemy jungler who has a shutdown bounty on his head, just tower dove, and he took seven tower shots, and he has a third health. And even though, yeah, he's really strong, he's, he's an extra item up, you can still execute him as Kajix. So, or Kazix, I'm sorry, you pronounce it differently. Hey, no problem. Whatever you say is, is fine. <laughs> but but you, you, know, you know what I mean, right? You, you just yeah. have to wait for them to screw up because it's gold and they will. Yeah. Uh, the, the other option is just don't let the shit hit the fan by always being more proactive. Yeah. And that just comes with proper planning. Like, if you yeah. can, if you know what that Zin Zhao is going to do farm-wise, that tells you that, oh, my level 3 gank bot will be uncontested. Oh, and I have a Blitzcrank. Oh, and, you know, I have more damage than the Sivir. You know, you know things like that. Thinking like that. Yeah. It'll just help you out. Because yeah. it's more about that being in the right place at the right time more often. And when that happens, you tend to be luckier more often for some reason. Yeah. Okay, helpful? That is very helpful. Very, very helpful. Awesome. All right, man. And if you want to do a replay, just schedule another session or whatever. I, I think this shit is fun, so I'll do however many you want. All right, awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it.